just remember that I forgot to do is pull up because you guys are starting in a tavern. <laughs> I need to pull up tavern generator that I downloaded. If I can find it. So this is um, a tavern generator that I found on TikTok, actually. Um, the creator is Waldo. And he makes um, shop generators, monster generators, magical crafting, like all kinds mm -hmm. of crazy stuff. And uh, huh. it's very good. If I can find it. So, little heads up, mm -hmm. my dad is installing a water pump or water tank. Okay. And it's like right next to my room. So, if I mute and Disappear. there's a lot of noise, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. that's the reason. We will, uh, we will keep an eye out for that. I wonder if my luck is going to carry over to this game. This game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not good luck. It's bad luck. Let me see if I can. Uh... There, there's an important distinction that you have to make there. I mean, I mean, there is though. Like, if if you if you got bad luck, I mean, it's like playing with freaking um, Zeus half the time. <laughs> it's like he will shit all over the board doing like random stuff and then like when it's time to do something important all he will roll is 20s and you're like have you been like cheating because it feels like you're cheating no he's preserving <laughs> his luck for the stuff that doesn't matter to put it in context i've had some games where i went the entire time not rolling above a 10. Ooh. Mm. So <laughs> let's hope for the best. Let's let's avoid that, shall we? Ideally, that would be Waldo's Guide to D and D. Waldo's Guide to D and D. Or the first Waldo. Is his name? Oh, got it! <laughs> ha ha! I found it. He gets a star. I'm such a, I'm such a dingus. Newfound king gets a star. <laughs> I'm over here like what what the heck? I'm normally I am normally more prepared than this. Well that's what the first you know first bit of the stream is for. I mean it really is. I technically <laughs> like you know we we here we go. Opening we. the sheet. Like we can test the the mic check and all that from here, but then you can only check the stream once the stream is up. Them's the breaks. Wait, what do I have a minus in? Hold on. Oh, <laughs> you have a minus in something? <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. My intelligence is a six. Well, this is just gonna be. <laughs> this is gonna be my, my... great. My wisdom is a five, so I'm right there with you. I had their dump stats anyways. I mean, dumping stats is, is a reality. You can't avoid it. Yeah, except I, uh... I was initially going to dump intelligence because I was going to build a fighter. Mm -hmm. But I ended up building a uh, an artificer instead. And you kind of need your but, uh, intelligence there. <laughs> yeah, so I had to switch things up. But I also wanted my constitution, and I also still wanted my strength. So yeah, my build is a... Uh... <laughs> my build's a bit janky. <laughs> I'm going to give him his own folder in my D&D &D stuff. Who gets their own folder? What? Who? When? The Waldo guy. 
Oh. <laughs> I was like, dang, newfound. <laughs> Wolf needs a uh, Wolf needs a folder just to keep track of all the shit you're gonna mess up. Exactly. Right. Damn right I do. Whoopsie daisy. I mean, Let's honestly, say... honestly, I should have more folders on my computer than I actually do. <laughs> if I'm at, at honest. That, at that point, you just need an attach like a, a detachable hard drive, an external hard drive, just for all of this nonsense. And just like throw every bit of whatever in there, character designs, models, notes from the stream. What did my players do today? What kind of dumb nonsense did they get themselves into <laughs> this time? You know. Exactly. Well, it's just like if you watch Critical Role, they spend about For 20 sure. minutes just bullshitting and doing their sponsorships. Hey, I mean... So here that's... we are, fixing our technical difficulties. Exactly. And... You know, and... like, there's there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's not. So... I mean, I feel like I feel like I need to like move ahead, but that, that's not necessarily a thing. Okay, so I can't. Can I access this? I don't want to report him. Hmm. I am going to report this content for being too quality. <laughs> it's so high quality. I can't handle it. Ah. Uh... <laughs> He's like, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, did you come up with your soups and foods ideas and everything like that? Or are we still working on that? Shoot, I was supposed I had... to build that, wasn't I? No, like, I got everything written down. Okay. And I didn't translate it to a Google Doc. Whoops. Because <laughs> um, that requires effort. Yeah, that also requires more computer time than I generally have access to. At work, I've got access to notepads and paper all day, but at home, it's not a computer. Of... Yeah, at oh home, no, computer. Like... Well, I've got a computer at home, but it's the at home. There's also five thousand other things to do, so... and all the distractions. Every single one of them. But I got some. Uh... Some interesting ideas. And I asked some of my uh, friends. And they came. Nice. Okay. So what I need to do is I've realized is I need to share this as a Google document. Because Excel apparently doesn't work. Yeah, Google Sheets. Hello, what is I'm that? A CSV or a TSV? Welcome back. Welcome back, gang. Because apparently it's only letting me share it as Excel, which apparently breaks the program. Huh? What? Everything is broken. Right? Despite the fact that I'm using it as a Anyway, I didn't want to use it on my phone. How do I share this with Sheets? Can I just save? Um, so, hey Pat Jim, welcome to the stream. It is a randomized tavern PDF that I'm trying to download off my phone to send to my computer. Oh wait, save as. It's still having me save as an Excel, which will break the program. So how do I save a copy if it won't let me... You know what? You know what? Let's copy his link. What is that link? Linktree.ee, the first wall. No. Okay. Let's try that. You guys want to throw out any shouts or anything like that, or advertise for anything? Now would be the time. Ah! That's my shout. <laughs> All right. Starting you out, the camera hangs across a blasted wooded wasteland, burning with fire in a direction up towards the mountains, and 
it is a very clear trail that something massive has gone through burning and destroying its way into the into the hills and you hear burning coming across the hills a roar that shakes the earth a howl that is answered by many other howls in the surrounding area but it out in the woods if there's no one to hear it it is actually happening <laughs> um you guys find yourselves in a uh, little tavern that's off a trail in the woods that's currently not on fire or being destroyed you a call went out for kaiju hunters and you answered that call and this was the meeting location for that hunting trip um you two have actually arrived a little early nobody else has really arrived that are also hunters so it is very quiet um there are trails going off that you can assume connect to villages and farms out in these woods and things like that uh, what you guys can see is a hobgoblin with short fashionable red hair is blessed with curls and this hobgoblin apparently does not have any teeth <laughs> I'm reading the description off of uh, Waldo's Guide to D&D, &D, Chapter 7, Taverns. Uh, so there is a scent of fresh mint in the air, and there is an observatory up top, and under the floorboards a stream of water is going underneath, which connects to a freshwater stream that goes underneath the tavern. So, there are two other patrons. Uh, both of them are Ganassi, and they are sitting together on a side of the bar. Um, since King won the first roll, we will go ahead and let him tell us kind of how he comes into the tavern and describe his character. If uh, if you want to go ahead and do that for us, King. Um. Yeah. So. What type of what type of door is that? Is it like? Um. Let's say that it's a. It's a normal like, door handle opening, door, into this building. Okay, so I open the door and I kind of like sheepishly lean in, only revealing my top half. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing uh, a breastplate. Um, it kind of looks a little dinged up, a little rickety. You can tell it's been used quite a decent amount, but not in kind of like an offensive manner. Mm -hmm. Um... I have kind of like shortish purple hair that kind of like fades into like a little vibrant green kind of. Nice. Um, and my skin is a light gray. Um, as I open the door all the way and I slowly kind of like saunter in, kind of keeping and peering around, uh, my lower torso is a spider. Um, I have gray fur going all the way along my, like, body, and then at the ends of all of my eight legs, I have kind of, like, green accents and highlights and things like that that matches the end of my hair. Um, I have sharp pointy ears, kind of like a elf, and I am not too tall. I think I'm about, like... Four foot seven, four foot eight, kind of. Okay, including legs and height and everything like that. Yeah, I'm. I'm a nice, a little okay. short person. Okay, all right. That's a very uh, cool. 
anything else you want to add? No, that's that's everything. Awesome. Uh, the the bartender, you know, sees you and waves at you and says, "Welcome, welcome. Can I get you anything to drink? We have an excellent special right now." Um, I'm kind of like standing there, kind of like rubbing my hands anxiously. I see him make eye contact. I like raise my hand, um, and kind of like, oh, hi, uh, yes, can, can I get a, a, um, just, just a water, please. Okay, okay. And you see them, they kind of run this bucket down under the floorboard and pulls the water up, uh, from... What you notice, and you notice this, that it's the the source, not after it's passed through where other people have been. So you are aware that this is fresh water that they are pulling up. So. And they pour it into a glass for you and uh, slide it across. I, I, I grab it as it's like sliding. And I, I reach into a little component pouch, I sprinkle in a little bit of sugar, squeeze in some lime, and I like stir it up and I start to drink. Excellent. Uh, they ask if you would, would you like to know what we have on our menu? Uh, yes, that would, that, that would be lovely. I would love to see what there is to eat. Excellent. And then they slide a menu across to you, and uh... You see that they have deviled snake's eggs, a leaf dog wrap, dog stew, a veggie sandwich, a squash casserole, a mango pie. And under their drink section, you see fresh milk, white tea, rum, scotch, lemonade, white wine, eggnog, and coffee. And then uh, written in uh what you did notice this as you kind of flicking up back and forth from the menu is above the bar is written specialty drink the hairy wizard with no description as to what it is so um i'd like to order the mango pie okay and Maybe try the, you said it was the fuzzy wizard? The hairy wizard. The hairy, I was close. Okay. <laughs> the hairy wizard. I'd like to give that a try. Excellent, and excellent. Yeah, that's everything. Cool, cool. Remi okay, I'm, I'm blanking a little bit. Uh, Ten silver equals one gold, right? Yes. Okay, so they go, that'll be... That'll be one one gold and five coppers. Uh I only I only have this and I slide them to two gold. Okay. And they make the change for you and give you uh your change back. And he goes, that'll be one second on that pie. And he pours you a tankard that is various shades of brown liquids. Wonderful. And hands it across to you. I um, I'll wait till after. Okay. While you're waiting on that pie, the door opens. And uh, our our next character walks in. Are you muted, Dizzy? <laughs> we have static no, on our end, but we couldn't actually hear you. Okay, here <laughs> I am. Okay, so, um, a how did we establish how tall he was last I time? I don't or? think we actually did. It would be nice to know how tall he is because I'm basing the scale of the crocodile on how tall he is. Because I said okay, you uh, were the eyeball was bigger than him. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so a like a six foot seven ish. Uh, okay, important note. Big... Important note. 
will add this. King said that he leaned into the doorway, so apparently this is a low door in a small tavern, probably designed by the Hobgoblin for his own size. So therefore... Oh. <laughs> no, I was I was saying more like, you know, no, like the Scooby-Doo kind of like oh, peeking. Leaning. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say, no, though, the that the, do the door the frame is five spider, like... feet, so you do have to, like, duck to come in. Okay, so before the door opens, there's a thump. Ow. Door opens, and then squatting in is this like six foot nine dragonborn. Yes. <laughs> um, electric blue scales, um, wearing splint armor, and it's got some like arcane lines glowing through it mm -hmm. um, with. What looked like kind of uh, uh, wheel contraptions on his back. And he he uh, walks in. He's got an apron around his waist, uh, but it's like tucked over. So he he kind of like squats down, comes in, looks around. Is this where the the next haunt is? Uh, I, this is where I was supposed to go, right? Uh, the bartender of the Hobgoblin waves at you and says, Welcome, welcome! Yes, they haven't arrived yet, but I had heard that a delegation from the city was coming. Oh, fantastic. So he walks over to the bar and just kind of squats. And uh, the, the rest of the bar is actually to scale with like general patience and stuff like that. Just small doorway. <laughs> so, okay. Like, like, Okay, they so didn't, just like, they didn't think about like the fact that like we made it big on the inside, but people will have to duck under the doorway. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> He's not oh. very absorbent. And, and they walk up and hello, hello, can I get you something to drink? Would you like our menu? And we have an excellent special here. Uh yes, I would like to see a menu, but I do want to try that uh fluffy uh wizard if you want, if you will. The hairy wizard, and I'll get that for you. Ah, uh, hairy, hairy, yes, cool. Pour pour the drink and put it in front of you. So what can I get you to eat? Uh can I try or do you ooh, remember? Can I ooh, I want to try that uh that mango pie. But ah, the excellent. double the, the deviled snake's eggs sound good too. Okay, I want to try that. Right. And they go, okay. They go, I'll get you that pie and double snake's eggs, and here's your drink. That'll be uh one gold and one silver. Plop plop. Alright. Take that out of my... And so you cool. guys have a few moments before the pie reaches you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys want to talk or interact. That's up to you. Yeah. Um, when you come in, you'll notice me making kind of like little anxious glances at you as like someone new comes in. Mm -hmm. But like try not to make direct eye contact. Uh, he's going to glance over. I'm going to glance over and look that you also got the, the, the hairy wizard. Have you tried this yet? I I uh was waiting for my mango pie to to try it. Ah, fair, fair enough. Takes yes. a sip. Takes a quick sip. <laughs> I I try to like mimic and quickly take a sip too. <laughs> uh. It's it's fairly in a general sense, it's fairly tasty. I would say, knowing your character, it's not <laughs> to your palate standards. There, there's not nearly enough exoticness to it. <laughs> and uh, that's a solid base. It could use a little work, but reaches into his pouch, pulls out a vial of red liquid, kind of like dashes it in, swirls it a bit. Ah, uh, just what it needed. Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say cherry? Yes. Okay. I needed to make sure. I needed to make sure that you didn't put anything too uh, 
interesting in it so that there wasn't a reaction. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, he the he he's he's the food alchemist. He doesn't carry a bunch of like right. explosives on him. No, no, I know oh, that. Oh. <laughs> uh, looking at you, nope. Uh, um He's not <laughs> here at the moment. <laughs> I know. But her character, she does the boom boom. Uh but no, so he just kind of swirls it around. Nope, yep, that that's good right there. Excellent. He takes another sip. Just kind of, just kind of vibing right at this point. Nice. How about I'm... you? How do you how do you feel that if uh, Yay, uh, enjoy this drink? I mean. I guess I'm glad he enjoys his drink. Okay. It's not like I made it. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, I'm just kinda like anxious, I guess. Mm -hmm. You you see and you kinda like get the feeling that my character is very on edge a lot of the time and lacks a lot of confidence. And so they're kinda like keeping to themselves, they're withholding themselves, they're very like trying to take not a lot of space up. Gotcha. Whereas, whereas Keish is sitting over here, not paying attention to anything, just sitting, taking up all the space he got, he does. <laughs> are you going, you're, just by general size, or are you intentionally spreading out? Just, just by. Are, just are you by, moving the condiments and stuff on the table and like rearranging them and stuff? No, like... no, no. <laughs> just by virtue of his size and that he's not. Um, mindful of how he's not trying to like maintain a, a lower profile he's mm -hmm. just he's not exactly like spread out across mm -hmm. the bar not like you know flopping his elbows across the mm -hmm. bar or anything like that no he's just he's just not trying to maintain because he doesn't okay. pay attention to anything around him <laughs> all right uh, at this moment the bartender brings up the pies and puts them down in both in front of you and goes, I hope you enjoy! Would you like refills on your drinks? Yeah. Alright. And, uh, they... I assume because you said you had taken a couple of drinks at this point that you you probably finished it. Oh, once he added the cherry extract, <laughs> yeah, it was just, over. It was gone. Alright. It was you gone. Guys, you guys, the, the bartender pulls another one and puts it in front of you. Mm. Yep, this is, uh, this is good and fuzzy. He chugs it. <laughs> they smile and go, do you want another? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Puts another one in front of you. <laughs> this one, he just, he's slow, he drinks a little more slowly because he okay. wants to have it with his pie. Excellent, but, excellent. Uh... Yeah, when the pie comes out, um, I'm gonna like grab a fork excitedly and like mm -hmm. kind of dig in. And you notice like on the first bite, kind of like the the green on like my lower torso kind of like flares up a little bit. Oh. And you know you can tell I'm I'm happily eating it. Ah, excellent. I mean I'm enjoying it. Good, good. Oh. So this is a this is a mango pie and it and it is well made. So, especially considering that the region you're in is obviously forestry, therefore, you know, pinko is not likely to be native to the area. So, however they made this pie is, is very well done. So. But is it to the palate <laughs> of the dragon board? <laughs> he takes a bite of it, mulls it over. Reaches in, pulls out another vial of like a dark brown liquid, kind of pops the cork, drip like dribbles a little bit, pops it back on, takes the next bite. Oh yeah, definitely needed some fish sauce. Fish sauce? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. That, I, I am strongly envisioning King's character like mid bite, like pausing as he hears fish sauce and just like. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that that cuts me out for a bit. But then I just go back and I'm just vibing as I eat this pie. I'm just 
in such a blissful mood. Excellent. I take a couple sips of drinks, of like my drinks and stuff, and continue on my way. Very good. Uh, he doesn't put, doesn't drown it in fish sauce anymore. He's just like nope, nope. No. So, but he does um, reach into one of his side pouches on his belt and uh, quickly jots down a couple things in uh, draconic, and then tucks it back in. I like it. I like it a lot. Mango pie, fish sauce. Then, Maybe uh, Tabasco? Question mark. But <laughs> as you're as you're putting your notebook back, the bartender goes, "Oh yes, and here's your deviled snake sex, fresh pulled this morning." The glee in his <laughs> eyes cannot be contained. <laughs> I have wanted to try these, but I have not found a good enough snake. So he takes the first one and just like. They assume they look like regular deviled eggs that we know about. Regular deviled eggs, but they're suspiciously like a, a little large. <laughs> it's fine, so am I. Just take. <laughs> In comparison, they look like normal deviled eggs. In comparison, they look like completely normal deviled eggs, but they're a little large. <laughs> I, I think for Yay, it'd be like a two-handed affair, just like. <laughs> No, but like, so Keese just grabs it, just ow, mulls it over, sets it back down, pulls out both of those vials, pops them, dribbles, <laughs> pop. Ow. The, the cherry and the fish sauce? The cherry and the fish <laughs> sauce. Just pops it. <laughs> and just like happily gulps it down. Sets it back down, scribbles a whole extra page of deviled snake. Eggs, fish, cherry, try this. Puts it back and just like devours the whole but, plate. But the thing is, he can. makes this sound like while he's talking, but it's it's uh Iziku Iziku from My Hero Academia. Just like <laughs> the lines are vibing out from him into the whole place and everybody's looking at him while he's making he's, these notes. He's going he's like he, if if you hear him at all, he's doing he's speaking part common and then part draconic and then part celestial and then part primordial. He just keeps going. <laughs> he's just like full nobody on can ranting. understand what you're saying. <laughs> full on stream of consciousness at this point. Just brrr, puts it back down oh. and just like devours these snake eggs, washes it down with the 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 hairy wizard. Oh. <laughs> Man, you seem to really like our special. Would you like to finish it off with another? I I might as well. And then I'll, he's gonna look over to uh, to the drider next to him and go, "You, I really do recommend the devil's egg, the the snake eggs. They are delightful." How how much were they again? Uh, they were half the silver. Half the silver. Okay. Um. Yeah, I I think I'll I'll take you up on that offer and and try some. Yeah, it's um, very delightful. And I I take out one of the silvers and okay. Yep, and they take it, exchange, and they go and it's like I'll be right back. I go off to go get it. So. Keish is just even happier at this point. He's just like do do do, just sipping more at the last of his uh. His wizard. So you finish? Are you finishing it, or are you just nursing it? Not, not, not yet. This not this yet. last okay. one, I'm definitely nursing because I've already I've had my dessert. Then I had my main course. Now I finish it off with the appetizer drink. You excellent, know. excellent. Let me know when you finish it. Okay. Uh, Scary words. <laughs> <laughs> when the DM says, "Let me know." No, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> Okay. You hit the certain criteria, so you just need to let me know when you finish. <laughs> four is the criteria? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, they bring you... They bring, uh, yay, his double eggs. And, uh, hope you enjoy! And they go off and start bussing the tables and, uh, cleaning up from the other 
Uh, there's still the, only the two other patrons that, um, they, as you guys have been eating, I imagine you guys kind of glance around. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, mm, Keisha's not so much. Mm -hmm. there, there's there's food. He's happy. Gotcha. <laughs> um, as I have been waiting for like my food, mm -hmm. I do look to see if there is a like notice board or information board or something. Gotcha. Um, there is not anything like that. Um, but as you're looking for the notice board, you do see that the Ganassi that were at the table, one of them uh, appears to be some kind of artificer. Uh, he has kind of tools and he's got something on the table. And the other one has an axe and they're talking about getting it repaired. And you can you can pick that up by the body language and he's got the tool out and he's using the contraption to examine it. So... Not sure what an artificer artificer will do to fix the axe, but you know, <laughs> there's, there's enough stuff we have that we can mess with it. I mean, we got we've got tools, we've got the the mending spell. Depends on what it needs. <laughs> so, or you know, just slap a whole bunch of gears on it and turn it into a exactly know, distant axe. Exactly, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, so there's not really like not really a notice board this apparently is not is not the social hub of of bars and taverns in the area um, okay so. well mm -hmm. I think at that point I'll just <clears throat> like look over at sorry I, I, I didn't actually catch your character's name? Oh, uh, call him Quiche. Quiche? Like, his his yes. name is Akishis, but yes, Quiche. Okay. Uh, I look over at Quiche, and I ask, are are you here for, for the kaiju hunt as as well? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Here to hunt the... Whatever this time is, of course, hopefully we don't get ambushed again. Hopefully we actually get to hunt the kaiju instead of it hunting us. Takes a casual sip. <laughs> um, uh, what do you mean, uh, again? Like, is that a big possibility that could happen? Oh, well, the last time we went to go hunt a kaiju, it ended up attacking us in the port. We didn't uh. even get to set sail. It came to us. Which normally would be a nice thing. Except it destroyed the port. I see. And you see, like, I kind of, like, oh, no. <laughs> slunker down and kind of, like, with that knowledge. <laughs> nah, hopefully it won't be the, the case this time. May the gods smile on us in this hunt. Oh. Out of character. Speaking of gods, mm -hmm. <laughs> did we did we figure out what my patron was at all? <laughs> oh, oh, jeez, oh, we never <laughs> sat down and decided. <laughs> oh. This is what I'm talking about. Like we didn't talk about it. Um. Oh no, that's like that's Warlock 101. <laughs> okay, we can we can figure that out we like can, another day. We can figure it out. I'll just. We'll try to avoid, um... <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, so about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good pie. <laughs> Just talk about that later. Oh, <laughs> my God. Okay. Okay, we will... We... Oh, jeez. <gasps> Actually... Do you did you have preferences in mind? I'm not too familiar with like the official patrons. Okay. So so if we came up with something custom. Yeah, that's that totally fine. Like, okay. So in our previous session, uh Keish actually came in contact with with a deity of the fates. Of the fates? Yes, like it's 
literally any translation of this character's name comes out to mean fate itself. Um, and so would you be okay with that character being your, your patron? It's Are they good with a sword? It's it, with a sword? Or like any melee weapon? Um, they're kind of cause. Are you making an anime joke right now? <laughs> no, because <laughs> I'm a hexblade warlock, right? So right. So uh, this is me having not enough knowledge about warlocks in general. <laughs> it's okay. So like, um, warlocks can be like their their patrons can be a demon or an angel or any mm -hmm. sort of it could be myself too yeah mm -hmm. yeah kind of if you're, if you're... <laughs> depending on the story backstory and stuff no, your 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 patron like your if you were like a a, he a hexploit warlock uh, you could have a sentient sword mm -hmm. is your patron. and every gotcha. time you swing it, it says fuck you know that, that yeah. could be a thing <laughs> okay you could have a sentient sword and shield. You could have a sentient anything. You could have an elder god, like like a Cth uh, Cthulhu esque elder god as your patron. It could be any sort of minor uh, deity of death or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's are... actually just something that can bestow magic powers upon upon oh, you yeah. or give you a power. That there's no problem with this character doing it. Um, this character is actually the one in charge of the cards in the game. Um, for the tarot cards, they're the they're the yeah. lore character for for where the like people choosing to choose a card instead of rolling a dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's well, like I said, we can we can fine tune it like later and stuff too. Okay. So we're not taking time away from the the session. This is fun. Yeah. No. It, I'm giving dizzy. <laughs> Having met this character, he's kind of panicking a little bit. <laughs> oh. You're doing a very good job of holding still, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what he's trying to decide is which character was which. <laughs> it's like I, I I knew which one was the the the, the card. Deity, yeah, the card. Um, mm, the 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 uh the other one. The other one was the one I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, because it was using a spear. <laughs> and King, you mentioned what your weapon was beforehand, so that's where <gasps> my brain went. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. King, we will talk later. We will talk <laughs> we will talk later. Oh, 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 that makes me happy. I like this. I apologize oh. for nothing. Oh. For reference, anyway. you don't see my weapon. It it's not visible. Yeah, that's why that's why I was like, well, you out of character. What your this entire conversation for. is out of character. Out of character. Everything's so. out of character. Okay, um, so oh jumping back into the game. Um, so, were you asking about your patron in this particular instance for a reason? Was there something you wanted to do? No, it was okay. more so just, it came to mind. Okay. I wanted to make sure because if it was about something you wanted to do, we'd have to do a little bit more. Um, but uh, okay, all right, good deal. So cool. Now you got my head spinning. I'm all excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh abilities and ideas are spinning through my brain oh mm -hmm. all right so um as you guys are finishing up your pies and your drinks 
um, the door opens, and a couple of characters walk in. Um, one of them is clearly a wizard, and um, with him is someone who isn't really dressed appropriately for the area. Uh, very noticeably, like, looks like he just stepped off a ship, despite the fact that you're hundreds of miles from water. <laughs> you know. And, um, he looks suspiciously familiar to Dizzy. Mm -hmm. But something's different from who you think he is. Oh. Um, the the wizard character that walks in front of him, you recognize him immediately, though. It's the wizard that gave you the ability to fly uh, yeah, yeah, in, your, yeah, yeah. in the first session. Um, and he recognizes you immediately and is like, Keesh, how you doing, my friend? And runs up to you and, like, starts shaking your hand. Oh, hello. Yes, very good to see you again. Very, <laughs> very happy to have you here. Very, your wizard prowess is very useful in these hunts. Oh, it's always good. You were such such a help rescuing all those people, and I was happy to, to keep you in the air. Oh, it, it was because you helped me in the air that I could save all those people. Excellent, excellent. So you're here for the hunt. Yes, yes. Always always another hunt. Excellent. Always new things to see and try. And the 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 uh seafaring man looks at you and goes, So you were the one that was up there. One of those. And he's irritated and he walks away. He kind of raises an eyebrow. Yeah. Yeah. What was that about? He's not too happy because you protected his brother. She is the wizard, like, whispering to you, but not quietly, like, at all. <laughs> you know, he's not too happy because one of his ships was the ones that sunk in the, in the battle. And he actually owned most of the vessels in the area that got destroyed. And you protected his brother's ship. So he's one of the twins of the captain. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, he kind of he kind of blames your group for not doing more. I don't know why, because there's nothing anybody can do. But anyway, that's you know that's just drama. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> you know? We'll we'll fix it. And he just downs the rest of the hairy wizard. All right, we're rolling a con saving throw. Cool, give it to me. Oh, what's your uh what's your constitution? Plus seven. Holy crap. Yeah. Um on a success you have are now drunk. Is this a like a con saving throw? Yes. Yeah, so uh seven. Yeah, you are so... now drunk. Yeet. For the rest of the evening. <laughs> so until you rest, you are now drunk. Oh, no. I was really hoping you would fail. That would have been hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> Alchemists get constitution this... buffs, and I... Uh, oh, no, no, no. I love it. I love it. I was hoping you would fail, but I love it. <laughs> so you no. down the drink, and as you put it down, it's like a... I mean, you feel like you got slapped by a kaiju. Like, your vision goes sideways. <laughs> Just like see the, his eyes just kind of glaze over for a moment. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so you far, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you see me kind of like push away my glass a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs> He just kind of like looks at the empty at the empty flag and it goes. I'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> Try that later. <laughs> oh man! He like, takes the next couple minutes to try to compose himself. I know it's not going to do anything, but he's mentally going to. Oh boy. Mm. Uh, 
four drinks, drink. four drinks oh. and you're drunk off your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, mm, mm, this is potent. He looks down to the uh, he he looks down at uh at, at Ye and tilts his head sideways. Tilsy, why are you standing on the wall like that? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm. I I haven't moved since you came in. You're kind of fallen over. Do, do you have? He he, he kind of like glances down and oh oh no! Oh, I am so sorry. I did not mean to. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to flex like that, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> he thinks your character is standing on the wall because you're a spider. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I shuffle through my, my little component pouch and I find like a, a kind of like a bitter berry. And I kind of like give it to him. It, 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 this berry is supposed to um, help ease sobering it's like a, a little urban legend in 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 my town oh well clearly since drunk i am <laughs> berry i will try and he gently takes the berry you think pops it it's 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 just a normal cran berry, <laughs> but there's rumors about it and so he just kind of like pops it and just mulls it over Balls. <laughs> oh, this is very tasty. I can feel myself sobering up already. He can't. He's not at all. <laughs> no. <Nope. Nah. laughs> you know, my name will matter. We'll go with that. <laughs> exactly. If you believe hard enough. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, the, the door opens. And a very well dressed person clinks in on a cane, and they are covered in white fur and have a very lupine looking face. However, they are very well dressed. They have an artificer's pistol in one hand and are smoking a cigar and walks in and says, I want a hairy wizard. And the bartender slides it to him real quick without getting close to him. And he chugs it down, turns around and goes, ah, so you are the ones that I hired to help me take care of this. You ca your characters immediately notice that he is missing most of his right leg. Which is the reason for the cane and yes your character says that yep in response his gaze snaps to you excellent he points the gun at you hold on hold hold on there's there's <clears throat> no no real need need for that as a, he kind of keeps his arm outstretched with his wrist kind of mm -hmm. low because he's prepared to like launch his cables there, there, there's no real need for that <clears throat> he looks confused looks down at the gun and goes oh this thing and drops it violently on the table <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that forgot I had it yes he looks down to the drider, looks back, looks down, looks back. The, uh, the Ganashi slowly make their way out of the tavern, out of the line of sight of this new character. <laughs> rubs, rubs his face, he's like, I forgot to myself, I forgot that I had that. I've been, uh, been on edge ever since the attack. Supposed to look like this, and he like gestures to himself, and he looks. They're not supposed very... to. Huh? <laughs> supposed to? Uh, he asked. I'm covered in fur. I've got the face of a fox. What? What do you expect? What did you expect me to look like? 
I'm a lizard. He's a spider. Anything's possible. He, he stops and he goes, That is absolutely fair. <laughs> <laughs> He's still gesturing at his own face because he's the, drunk. The wizard, the wizard is being totally a nerd and goes, "I thought you were a dragon. Are dragons lizards? Did we ever decide that? Is that a fish?" And like he's just like <laughs> making notes: dragons, lizards, dragonborns. Are they mammals or dragons? Are they reptilian? He just like goes off on like this random like. And the 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 former captain is just like, oh dear lord! And he stands up and he introduces himself to to this, you know, fine dressed lupine gentleman, <laughs> and says, "Oh, his name just went right out of my head. I cannot remember the captain's name. We're gonna come up with mm -hmm. one very quickly." <laughs> he reaches out, shakes his hand, and says, Alexander, former captain of the Queen's Squall. And the guy shakes his hand in return and goes, Argus Waxing. I uh I own most of the land around here and uh not too happy about having a giant beastie going around cursing people and he points at himself and eating legs <laughs> like he's clearly very distraught and uh he goes I uh and I assume that you're uh, the wizard <laughs> the wizard goes yes do you have a name not one I want to share with you his name is the wizard call him the wizard it's like yeah. good enough I'm the only wizard in the area, so. <laughs> he, he turns to Keish. Are you drunk? No. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I want to be drunk, but not off of the only acceptable drink in here. I saw a man once. Chunk did way too much, couldn't hold his liquor, started throwing up hairballs all over the place. It was horrible. Glances back at the <laughs> cup. <laughs> <laughs> Made a mess. I had to leave. Couldn't couldn't bring myself to come back here. The sight of a grown man throwing up hairballs. Keish leans over to to Ye and goes. How many of those did you drink? Uh, glancing over at my like half, half empty glass. <laughs> um, not even one. Good, good, good. Ex yeah, excellent. Do you think that's why it's called the hairy, mi hairy wizard? Because it's a magical drink that makes you spit hair. I hope not. <laughs> Are you trying to count how many drinks you had? <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you can still count while drunk. <laughs> I've only got four fingers. It's fine. <laughs> oh. Argus is like looking back and forth. He's like, come on, people. Come on. We're here to hunt a kaiju. Let's go. Uh, yes, yes, here to hunt big beasties and problems and yes, and that. Here to solve Excellent. problems. He literally, and he's like gesturing to like the captain. He's like, pull tables, pull move things. And like they completely, like, I feel so bad for this hobgoblin. Like they completely rearrange the bar. All the nice like decorations that are on the tables are just pushed aside. Like, you know, and he starts rolling out maps. You know, and he's, he's people like other various like background attendant type people are coming in and like rolling out mat mats and like putting things down and all people that clearly work for Argus. And uh, so he lays out the map and now 
you've been traveling in this area and you're able to recognize that it is a map of the area. And uh, it's like, all right, then we're here. And he places map marker. And, uh, goes, the last known sighting, and he puts a marker uh, kind of like into the northwest several probably probably about 20 20 miles or so from where you guys currently are roughly and he's like this was the last known sighting of the beast this is where we will start our hunt and he's like and it was going in this direction and he makes notes on the map and uh it's the direction they think is heading north and he circles an area and he goes this is my uh, vineyard, as well as, you know, it's like a vineyard in the hills. The wizard actually says that. And he goes, I had it leveled by one of your people. That was expensive, having him individually change the size of the ground for three months with magic. The wizard's like, what spell does that? <laughs> you know? Like... <laughs> <laughs> uh... <Holders. laughs> exactly, you know, but like, this wizard's like, this wizard's like, what spell does that? And why did it take three months? Did he get scammed? Did they do it with a shovel? And then, like, you know, like, it's just that kind of, like, that's kind of the look that's going around, like. No, he, he did, uh, what's that one spell where it does, like, a five-foot square of earth mm -hmm. just did that over and over and over again exactly you know like he's doing it five you know like but like wizards trade in different circles and things like that so this but this particular wizard has not learned mold earth and mm. it's like... or he's just way too experienced that he forgot all the basic things <laughs> yeah exactly he's like i can cast flies like fly like it's no big deal you know like huh <laughs> <laughs> He, lo he lost his spell book too many times. He's he's oh. lost track of the old spells. Um, he lost all of his first and second level spells. Now it's just all eighth and ninth level. You exactly. Know, like he... But even there's a cantrip. <laughs> Which is you have distinctly noticed that this wizard has not cast anything so it's speaking in the building. So. <laughs> yeah, well. Fine. So, I guess we should go hunt? You know, Argus is like, yes, yes, yes. Um, and he looks around. I will not be coming with you. <laughs> it's like, I already lost a leg. I've already been cussed. I won't be coming with you. I will pay you handsomely for, for your efforts in protecting my establishments and my people, as well as the rest of my land in the area. And, uh, so... Well, I mean, I, I suppose that's why we are hired, and... I tried to get the entire army, but they only said to be you people. So, what can you do? Beat down a kaiju, that's what we can do. Have you ever yes. fought one? <laughs> yes. In fact, just, just recently. The, you can see Argus doing the, like, kind of, like, the only major kaiju incident was that crocodile on you. Kaiju's fang. You were there. It's like... Hmm. Not nearly as inebriated as I am now. <clears throat> but <laughs> he yeah. kind of was like... <sighs> Hopefully you could sober up before you have to fight this thing. Uh, well, <clears throat> Hopefully yeah. it doesn't. Hopefully we can go find it instead of it finds us. I mean, wouldn't hunting it at night be a better option? It is an option. He's like, I will leave you to your own devices as far as how you want to hunt this. Please discuss amongst yourselves. And he um, writes down on a corner of the map and he marks a location. Uh, he's like, this is my where I live. Return here with proof that you have destroyed this monster, and I will pay you handsomely. And hopefully my curse will be lifted. And he picks up his gun, and he goes, 
I'm out of here. And walks out the door with his people leaving the map behind. Which leaves you, the wizard, and Alexander standing over this map in a thoroughly disrupted tavern and the hobgoblin wringing his hands behind the table going, he didn't even pay for his drink. <laughs> he plops an extra gold on the counter. They, they absentmindedly do the change for you. <laughs> it waves it off. Just oh, okay. It keeps it. Doesn't even pay attention. Just like takes the gold, puts it on the counter. Still staring at the map, hoping it stops moving. <laughs> well, I'm gonna start condensing all the maps onto like one table, and then okay. I'm gonna start like slowly pulling the tables back to where they originally were. <laughs> they, they, the wizard and Alexander help you. So does Keish. Okay. Just because that was that was very rude. You always reset your tables. <laughs> as as someone of fine dining knows. <laughs> all right. Uh, so once you guys have that consolidated and you're all sitting around the table, the wizard looks at the map and uh, says, "Okay, we can get over here." to where that initial place is in about a day, roughly. Uh, I noticed the wagon outside. Uh, both the wagons? You guys both brought your wagons? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay. He goes, okay. He's like, we also have a wagon. Alexander is clearly, like, irritated. He's like, went from having an entire ship and an entire crew to only having a wagon. Doesn't even belong uh, you... to me. <laughs> you rebuild. It's fine. Everything's fine. It'll be great. And... Kind of hurls. It says, uh, "Okay, well, do you guys do you want to do any additional planning? What do you guys feel? But we'll just like the wizard is sitting there, and he's like, we should have asked him what it looked like before he left." Yeah, sorry. That was that was a little meta of me for being like, "Oh, it would be better to hunt it at night." It's, no, no, I it's didn't... like, no, no. That's a good thing for you to say, but like, he, you know, this character clearly is very eccentric and just expects you to deal with his problems because he's rich. And uh, so, and generally, generally speaking, hunting at night is a better option. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking. So yeah. I'm getting okay, a lot of... I just No, you guys are fine. I'm going to check uh, something so because we never we're did getting ask a lot quick. of uh, frame drop notifications. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, it's moving my... on the screen now. My thought process was it gives you time to rest and so we're up and maybe it would be asleep or tired or something like that during the night. Um, it, and it takes about a day to get there, so that uh, sounds like a good idea. All right. The wizard goes, okay, sounds good. And, uh, starts making some notations, just general, like, you know, basic mapping notations of like, okay, we're gonna have to travel this far, and we probably, and he picks a spot on the map that's kind of like just to the side of wherever the last location was. He's like, we should probably camp here, and uh, because if it's staying around in that area, we don't want to get ambushed. So, do, do we know anything about the um, the local wildlife there. Do you guys want to make a nature check? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do that. Who's making the check? Whoops. You can do that. I'm not. I've, I've got that. Yep, okay. I'll do that. This was an accidental check, so I'm going to... That's fine. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that plus seven. 
right. Uh, so that would be a 13. 13. Um, most of the wildlife in this area, you've got some foxes, some bears, general, general foresty animals, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you do know that this area is prone to wolf packs. Um, and they have been a little bit more active lately. So. Hmm. So what we do, what we could do, I have... <laughs> All sorts of good things in my wagon. We can, if we can get some, um, if we can get enough meat, we could probably set up some sort of uh, delicious smelling trap or some kind. Make, that, the, make the creature come to us. That would be a good idea, but it also means while we're traveling, we might get attacked. Huh. That's why we cook when we're there. When we know where we want to be. No sense in trailing the smells with us. It's been yeah. very enticing. I am a master sh- <laughs> uh. <laughs> Okay, are these hiccups real? Or <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. you're, you're, it's a distinct thing to acknowledge that, like, Clearly, Ye is worried about raw food. Mm. And your character is ignoring the fact that you would be hauling raw food around and yep, yep. thinking about the fact that the cooked portion of food is what would attract <laughs> things. Yep. <laughs> the wizard is looking back and forth. He's like... Oh, I have an idea, actually. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. Um... In my component pouch, I probably have some weird smells, like maybe some like skunk odor or something. Mm-hmm. And we can use that to mask the food smell. Okay. And then when we get there, we can set up the trap. That way it counteracts while we travel. The gears kind of turn and click. Uh, yep, 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 that, that makes sense, yep, yep. It's definitely an idea. So. I didn't even think about that. that. Alexander goes, it's all well and good to set a trap, but how are you going to cat? <laughs> how are you going to take down the beastie? I assume we just fight it like usual. I mean, we don't... We'll just have to figure that out when we find it. We weren't told what it was. We weren't told what it does. So just like the crocodile, we'll have to figure it out. That we yeah. I suppose. The wizard it's... goes, The thing is, that's nice, is that these things are so big and so destructive that we'll be able to gather information as we travel. It's probably left a trail of destruction all through these woods. As kaiju tend to do. As they tend to do. Um, when we do finally get it, I could potentially cast darkness around its head to blind it for a bit. That should give us a bit of time to, to like, attack. Excellent, excellent. That actually is a very good idea. Wizard nods his head. Good, good. I like that. I imagine I can pull some stuff out to help make things a little bit easier for us. We'll have to find out how large it is and we'll go from there. (laughs) Alright. Is there any other planning that you want to attempt to try to do before you before we kind of fast forward? Maybe we should all take one carriage, just so we're not expending multiple resources. Uh, the, At least. 
I'd say we at least take two. Mine uh, doesn't exactly have a lot of room for passengers. Oh, and if I can set up the good trap. I need all of my equipment. I I can carry the passengers then, because I have a, a carriage, not a wagon. Hmm. So it's meant for very spacious. Okay. The, we'll the wizard and the, the and Alexander both are like, okay, that'll be that'll be much better than our uh, previous accommodations. So. All right. And. Uh, a caravan down. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. So are you all, all right. planning to rest kind of as the wagons are traveling? Is that your plan, or are you deciding to to stay at the inn? Well, what time is it right now? Um, I would say that you're probably looking at... It's probably close to what's up what's up on a nope <laughs> get over here get over here oh <laughs> uh, good to have you once upon a nope how are you doing nope. I know. Uh, let's say that it's about i'd say it's about three o'clock four o'clock in the afternoon kind of mm -hmm. around there so you you got Probably three, four hours of daylight. So Okay, so maybe sleep till 10, head out on travel. We'll be able to get to the other place by 10. This is this p.m. <laughs> and uh, hunt it at nighttime so we don't suffer any exhaustion while we fight. Mm -hmm. oh, sounds good to me. Said it would be about a day to get there, so that sounds good. Okay. Hello! How are you doing, Once Upon a Note? Hope you're doing well. Alright. So, uh, you can either take rooms here, which are four silver each. Once Upon a Note says, Dizzy, my boy! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or you can sleep in your wagons. I think I'll spend a night in 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 my carriage, um, and spend time with my horses to okay. to make sure they're okay through the night. Sounds good. I'll go out to my wagon, kind of like strap, like uh, chalk the wheels, lock down the. The engines. So you guys are outside, like taking care of your stuff. Um, please, please describe your what your wagons and carriages look like and your form of uh, transportation for them. <laughs> oh, she redeemed. Give a star to a D and D player. Dizzy gets another star. <laughs> yes. Hi. Thank you. I was saying Dizzy can explain first because okay. I explained my character first. Okay, cool. All right, so, um, it has a very, very vague semblance of a traditional horse-drawn wagon, except it looks. That's where it, it looks vaguely like it. Very large, vaguely horse shaped arcane engines on the front. <laughs> so it looks like three horses drawing. Thank you for the uh, biddies and the gold bloom laugh. Uh, but it's just all arcane, all mechanics, not a single organic bit to the wagon itself or to the engines. There's so it's a, a um, extremely steampunkian machinery very, that 
instead of being a standard wagon. So, yeah, the uh, there is a what a, a distinct uh, panel on the side on each side of the wagon. Um, you can see hinges on it. Not sure exactly what happens, but you know they're they're hinged on the bottom side, so it looks like they would just fall out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, not a bit of organic material on this on this wagon. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Am I... Okay, <laughs> I was about to ask, am yeah. I good to go? <laughs> yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> so, um, looking out, you see kind of like a large Thank you again. <laughs> standard carriage. And the top where like the canopy is isn't standard. Mm -hmm. It's covered in different types of leaves and shrubbery and like bushel and stuff to give it kind of like a little cover to it and then on the sides you see more like vines and more leaves covering kind of like the sides hanging down a little bit to have it blend in more with like trees and surrounding but some of the plants and like roots that you see kind of have like little speckles of like maybe a little bit of vibrant orange, a little bit of vibrant purple, vibrant green, and things like that. That's like, so it looks like leaves, but it has a bit of differentness to it. On the front, you see two horses. One is um, kind of like an obsidian black horse and um, has kind of like a tinge or a hint of like dark purple in its mane. The other one is like a white, um, I don't want to say vibrant because it's not vibrant, but like a, a pure white horse mm -hmm. um, and kind of like a pastel -y, blue, greenish kind of mane to it as well. And they're both hooked up to the carriage with like very comfortable looking saddles with lots of extra padding and things like that. Um, and the back of the carriage has like a little basic um not draw draw door but like it's a little like lever that you hold up to unlock it and like pull out the door like the very old standard kind of like wooden lock kind of thing and a little set of stairs that you can unfold down to it that's the most complex thing on it <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's my my carriage. That's lovely sounding. That is a lovely sounding carriage. I don't oh, right. Okay, who do we commission to make that look really cool? Because yours looks so much cooler than mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will, I will look into getting commissions. I am poor right now, so. <laughs> No, I feel that on spiritual level, it's fine. <laughs> I would love to have, like, I would love to get to the point where I could get stuff commissioned, like, on a regular basis. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So, you guys take care of your animals and your wagons and everything like that. And, uh, Was Keys just taking care of his wagon and then going to stay in the tavern, or was he staying in the wagon as well? Uh, he was gonna he was gonna stay in the uh, in the tavern. Okay. But he was just right. getting the getting the wagon prepped for the night. Okay. So you guys have no trouble prepping and everything like that. Um, the wizard and Alexander decide to stay in the tavern as well. So. All right. Do some sleep. Yep. <laughs> uh, we do the rest. Do the rest. Get the sleeps. You guys, um... You guys get your 
full rest back and are able to you guys are you said you were going to sleep for a couple hours versus like doing the full eight hour rest we can we can round it to eight because if you said it was like about three ish or so and we Mm -hmm. are sleeping till 10 we can just sleep till like 11 or so that's that's a full night rest yeah so you guys full night's rest uh Keish wakes up with no ill effects from his drinking. <laughs> and, uh, Oops. You guys are able to pack up and hit the road. Uh, is there anything you guys want to do before you leave the tavern? No, I think I'm good. No, no, we're good. Okay, all right. So you guys all gather up. Um, the wizard and Alexander climb into Gay's wagon and or his carriage, and you all set off, heading towards the area that you guys originally marked on the map. Mm-hmm. So. And, um... What is what order are you guys traveling in? I'm not very good with directions. Okay. So I will trail behind, unless the 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 wizard is giving us directions on where to go. I guess that's the important thing to figure out, huh? Yeah. I feel like the wizard's handling most of the map stuff, so. Probably better if you're in the front, giving directions, and then Keish can follow behind. So, so uh, they'll, they'll handle the navigating and stuff like that, so you don't have to worry about it. Yo. So. And like while we travel, I'll be keeping an eye out for uh, little wildlife. Little bits, little bits of game that I could hunt and okay. try to add to the to the tastiness kind of like, factor. Yeah. Before we set out, mm-hmm. wait. Um, the way we're traveling, are we going through like a foresty kind of area? Yes, the entire area is forest. There are trails and stuff through there, but it's the entire region is forest. Okay, okay. Then before we set out, I will grab my hempen rope, my 50-foot long hempen rope, and tie it to the back of my carriage. In the middle, I'll tie kind of like a white cloth or something like that in the middle, and then hook it up to the front of his carriage, just in case, like, Mm -hmm. you lose sight or something. It's still kind of, like, there. Okay. Yeah. No, that's really solid. Really nice. I like it. Anything could go wrong. So, <laughs> so you guys are now connected. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. All if right. if that's okay with you, I okay. I do ask permission to do that before <laughs> before I do it. So he, there's actually like enough of a like a hook area on the one of the engines, like the middle engine, that you could just easily tie it to. Like it. Uh, that wasn't anything. I'm just adding the dice. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> every time. I mean, I'm gonna need it eventually. I I know, so. but still, every time. All right, let's go ahead and. Wolf. Hmm. Wolf, what are you doing? What do you mean? What am I doing? Wolf, why are there three red dice? I need two of them for our characters. Oh. I, <laughs> I added a wizard and a and a sea captain? My bad. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I can't seem to change the color of these individual ones at the moment. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to use anybody else's dice. Mm. So. 
All right. So you guys head out traveling, connected, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pen this so they don't go wrong for now. All right. Uh, Dizzy, you said that you are looking for game to hunt. Yeah. Do you have a skill you would like to use with that? Uh, well, let's see. Would it be what kind of a check do you think I would have to make, or a series of checks? Because I've got probably either like survival or I'd say probably survival. That's kind of a hunt. Hunting would be kind of what I would think. Yeah. All right, let's give it a try. <laughs> okay. Or or nature or investigation, mm -hmm. really? Yep. I, I... Can we take a nature or investigation? That'd be cool. Yeah, which would you prefer, nature or investigation? Uh, either one. They're the same modifier for me. Uh, let's go with investigation because you're like actively looking and okay stuff like so, that. So, uh, twelve. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's gonna be nineteen. Nineteen, nice. So you are able to like, um, uh, as you go along, there's like some like like squirrel type game and stuff like that you even do see a uh, a large buck just off the trail do you so, do you choose to collect any of those so so king um as as we're traveling along if you ever glance back to uh my care my wagon to make sure everything's cool uh, you'll just see the uh, the panels that were on the side fold down, and nobody will emerge from it. But these twenty foot long cables will just shoot out of the side <laughs> of the wagon, <laughs> and just they they look like um, Doctor Octopus from Spider Man Two, the little three pincer. Uh, hand yeah yeah just just reach out snag whatever's within range and yank it back into the wagon oh <laughs> that's pretty good cool that's pretty cool <laughs> it just periodically throughout the throughout our travels just the, the horror stories that the animals tell is this iron beast just steals. <laughs> <laughs> well, Grandpa was climbing along the tree and he just gone. <laughs> it's out of here. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, now, are you guys traveling in any way? Are you guys traveling normally? Or are you trying to be cautious, or are you trying to kind of get there as fast as possible? I feel like maybe the first while we're trying to go at like a normal pace, mm -hmm. but as we get closer, we might be more cautious. Okay. Maybe um, if that's okay with you. I mean, especially since we're we have two wagons, and for reference, uh. My wagon is not quiet. Yeah. That's good to know. So so any kind of stealth rolling would be at disadvantage. Uh, a, a little bit. I mean, because okay. I've got these three arcane machines just puttering along. Okay. It, it's not like, you know, you sound like a V8 rolling through. It's just, no, it's just not exactly uh, quiet. Okay. You you definitely hear the, 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 the steam pistons going off. Oh yeah. Okay. Horses can walk a little quieter. There's only <laughs> you're so clearly much louder than the horses, horses, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. What is stealth? So this is gonna be for the first roll, or for the first half when you guys are like, <laughs> not not really trying to hide, right? Uh huh. Okay. Oh hello. <laughs> okay. All right. Good deal. <laughs> Oops. You guys have no problems in the beginning. Uh, however, 
I just noticed that was a two. Yup. Your mm. your machine is exceptionally loud. Like in this like you never noticed before because you normally travel like in and out of cities, but in like in these trees and stuff, like the noise is just reverberating and you're just like oh, it's really loud. <laughs> just um... just like here's the echoing just hmm. <laughs> goes back to work. Uh but but Despite the roll, nothing happens. So, um, and then as you guys get closer to your camping site, we'll do. Now you guys are trying to be stealthy. Um, uh, you guys, I guess we'll try to add some bonuses for that. If you guys have <laughs> stealth, if you have stealth, you can uh, incorporate that. Holy shit! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you try no. so hard to be stealthy. <laughs> we try too hard, and it ends up backfiring. Oops. <laughs> well, we're just going at half the pace at this point. <laughs> yeah, you're just going like it takes you a little bit longer to get there. <laughs> like, hello, kitty cat. Oh, so, all right. Uh, I'm going to ask you both to make perception checks. <laughs> okay. Sound good? Uh, I think at this point, I'm going to use my inspiration to give me advantage on it. Okay, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I'm for it. All right, you've got advantage. All right, I have a plus four. Plus four. Uh, sorry, plus three. Plus, plus three. Plus three. To perception. All right. Yeah. I have Why did I pick one. up this one thing? <laughs> it's, it's going. It's going, man. It's going good. Dang. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it. <laughs> I meant to collect all of them, but okay. The roll to beat is a thirteen. Oh my. Nice. 18, 16. That's well done. A lot. That's just yeah, so that's a lot. 21. 16 for me. Nice. All right. Um, as you guys are wrapping up the journey and coming into your uh, where you guys decided you were going to camp, um, the, the wizard intentionally took you on a pathway that kind of Kind of ended up inadvertently avoiding the damaged areas because you have two giant wagons, you know, and a carriage. You can't exactly just roll through the woods with them. Uh, so having to follow mostly pathways, you did see some damaged areas along the way. But it think of it kind of like if you're driving through an area and they did power lines and like you know, off to the side, there's just destroyed trees in a, in a in like a line in a direction, but you can't take the wagons through there because there's tree trunks and everything like that. It would be extremely difficult. It would take me too long, but you're still able to make it through the paths. Um, there's some burned areas. There's stuff like that. As you guys get closer to where you're gonna camp, you notice that the area there's more and more of those kind of crossed line, like crossed lines of destruction. Um, you also have started noticing pools of dry, like pools of dried stuff, and upon some slight closer inspection, it's actually blood, but it's like large pools of dried blood. Clearly the kaiju has been injured by something. Um because it's way too much blood, you know, for a normal creature to have been bleeding and not be there still <laughs> due to what's happened. Um so yeah. 
um just a little bit more information mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not too smart so i wouldn't know this but do you think dizzy could get any um knowledge on how long the blood was sitting there might be able from, like to. how dry it is no that could be a thing do you want to make a uh, roll for that yeah let's make a roll for that what would i do for that one I feel like, what do we think, investigation? It'd probably Again? be... Or yeah. Something like that? That feels like something that would give you that information. That, so, sounds, that, sounds, that sounds good. You got a 16 on that previous roll, just remembering that. Yep. Uh, 11. 11? I feel like you probably got... You can tell that the blood is, like I said, beginning to dry, and you could give your best rough estimate that, based on the amount of blood and everything like that, that it's probably been there since the day before. Um, uh, this, is, this has been here uh, maybe, recently ish. You know, like probably early morning the day before. So, yeah, recently ish, yeah, last day or so. As you're investigating the blood, you hear faintly off in the distance, both of you hear this um, the howling of wolves. So, that's kind of spooky. It is, I mean, you are getting close to the campsite. It's now getting dark. It's now pretty much dark. Um, and you kind of hear their, like, yip, yip, you know, that kind of stuff as they uh, are. I guess he had to turn his camera off. Um, as they are beginning their. Most likely, you're as to be, I I would say that like, if you've traveled in the woods before or anything like that, you know, you're you could estimate that they're probably starting their hunts for the night. So, and uh, everything good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Camera just we know it might podcast. be wolves. Mm-hmm. Maybe hunting that night might not have been a good idea. <laughs> there are other things hunting in the woods. My camera hasn't come back on. It's so it's weird. Yeah, so I've got yeah, I've got the the conversation up in two different places. So like I can see Dizzy over here, but I can't see him on the stream. So don't know what's up with that. <laughs> We're trying to hide. That's fine. We can still hear you. That's the important part. So. Okay. Gotta love technology. That's <laughs> great. Alright. Uh, uh, no worries. Some, we're gonna have some. Um, um, maybe those are just regular wolves, you know? Maybe not kaiju sized wolves. It'd be fine. Yeah, that 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 is true. I mean, you distinctly heard a kaiju is in the area. You know that for a fact. And so, you know, and you the sounds that you heard were definitely more pack. So that's a lot of lot more animals. So and you have seen animals in the area while you've been traveling. So normally something that destructive chance to chase things away so mm -hmm. all right so um let's see we're at 3 30.
I do want us to have time to enjoy what I have planned for you all. Mm -hmm. So are you guys okay with doing kind of a time jump from this point? Mm -hmm. to yeah, I'm okay with that. Possibly yeah. some exciting panicked moments happening. Um, Not really. So. Quick time jump. Um, the scene fades out as you guys come up to your campsite. Mm -hmm. When the scene fades back in, the forest is ablaze. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, told you not to cook too close to the trees. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was going to need that much heat and it was going to be this dry around here. And I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> Desperately trying to fan out the flames. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear a rousing chorus of wolves. Often in the surrounding too... flames. And rising over you above you guys a hundred feet is the gigantic form of a giant wolf. Oh. That's not good. You give us about five more minutes and the stakes will be done. <laughs> And the wizard the, the wizard has like hastily erected a magic dome of protection. You guys don't really recognize the spell, but it is keeping the fire from coming into the camp. Mm -hmm. Um and as he's holding this dome of protection, you see the wolf take a breath and fire come down around the dome. And the wizard goes, it would be really great if you guys could do something. <laughs> looks looks to Yay and just, may as well. <laughs> as you guys are well. preparing to uh, do something through the sides of the dome, uh, clearly not stopped by the dome, wolves charge in at you. Roll for initiative. Heck. I guess I roll for initiative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're waiting on you here, Wolf. All right. Uh, what is this? Is the Wolf Camp. Here we go. Whee! Doing. <laughs> All right. So do you guys get bonuses to your initiatives? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> I get a one. Okay, so I you're 14. Zero. You get a zero. I'm six. Six. Fine. <laughs> okay. So so it's gonna be the wolves first, followed by Fizzy. Or followed by King and then Fizzy. So alright. Oh. Uh, so they do get advantage. Um, and oh, hold on. Well, we're just gonna go. Mm -hmm. Did you... Ouch. Uh. What are your What are your ACs? <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> What's your AC, Dizzy? 17. Uh, yeah. So, you both get attacked and by various wolves. Um, what is the D6? I know there's a D6. Whee! D6 bite. D6 <laughs> bite. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we'll take that. That's a that that's is a lovely a good one. Right so, dude, I love how much it just spins in right? midair <laughs> as it calculates our doom. Uh, all right. So, uh, 
Um, Dizzy, you take two damage. Yeah, we're going to split that damage for so a total of four. You both take two. Okay. Ow. There's like we get gnawing scratched. at the arm. It just goes, yeah. I'm not going to eat. Are, the wolves are carrying and jumping at you. And... So, King, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um... Do we want to take care of the small wolves first, or do we want to take care of Probably the small ones first, huh? They're currently attacking you and surrounding you, so... That's probably... Okay. Um... And they are also kind of going after the wizard, so... Oh, that was my turn. Just drop that there for now. Okay, how, ma how many wolves are there? I'd say there's probably about 10 in the area of your campsite. And the campsite area is roughly... His dome is probably 50 feet across, and you guys are inside of it. Okay, I will probably run... To where? Oh, what is it? I'll run to the closest wolf. Okay. But kind of like the one on the farthest edge. Okay. And I will. Oh, that won't work right now. Eh, whatever. So. I'm going to cast darkness on myself. Okay. And um kind of like shroud a 15 foot area around me and all the wolves. So there'll still be like some wolves that are mm -hmm. open and stuff like that. So that's my action. And you watch as as I cast the spell darkness, you hear me say uh, something in Infernal. Okay. And you watch me kind of like draw my uh, halberd, kind of like materializing out of the air. And nice. I grab it as I say Requiem in, in Infernal. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just wait with like the wolves around me in like this magical darkness. And that's the end of my turn for right now. That's awesome. Mm. All right. Does he? I will. First order of business. Uh, I'm gonna. I reach out as I was going to do something, to uh, to yay, but then I see the darkness dome and I say, ah, never mind. So I'm going to move toward, move slightly towards the nearest set of wolves. Okay. And I'm gonna take two attacks at the nearest one. Okay. Within 20 feet. So you need two light. dice for that? Yeah, it's two separate attacks. Okay. Because fifth level extra attack. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Your first one is very, very successful. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Mm. Okay. Uh, so that's still a dirty 20. Yes. Because I'm using my uh, kinetic cables. Oh. Um, so, one <laughs> of the things that I'm doing with this is that these guys kind of have, uh, these wolves kind of have swarm settings. Um, so, their damages will do more than just one creature, mm -hmm. depending on how much damage okay. you roll. Uh, what is your attack damage? Uh, 1d4 plus. So that's so seven. Seven. 
Holy crap. That's a four. Yep. And now it's spinning. <laughs> Landed on four again. So that works. Okay. So that was seven and eight. Mm-hmm. And you so that's a total of fifteen. Yeah. So what ends up happening is you see this darkness dropping and you move towards the wolves and you've got five because I said there was about what ten? Yeah. In the area. And there's like five in front of you and you just annihilate them. Like, they come at you and your just cables are, like, catching one, slamming it into the other, and then as they come at you, you take the other cable, grab the third, and just... <laughs> These things are not very strong. They take a lot of damage from that attack. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they... You don't, you don't really outright kill them. But your attack does so is so overwhelming to them that they immediately back off, and and you kill two of them outright, and the other three back away from you, and okay. are clearly not wanting to engage with you anymore. They did not expect so vicious an attack. Rise, motherfuckers. <laughs> so. Right. So that that's it, and then actually, um, I'm going to use I'm going to mm -hmm. use my bonus action, yeah, to boost twenty feet towards them, just to get right up in their faces. Uh, excellent. So the wolves in front of you, because it's now their turn, because that's the end of your turn, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the wolves in front of you, like your assault, is overwhelming, and they are continuing to run away from you, leaving target range. So you do get an attack opportunity against them. Okay. Do you want Whack. to take it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> Whack. Give it a whack. I'll take it a whack. You miss. That's that's not a good whack. <laughs> Wait. What? What? What's your bonus on your attack? The uh, plus seven. So and, that's still that's a ten. That's yeah, it doesn't kind of quite make it. That's fine. So. Like he he just used one to boost, <laughs> so he's still got that momentum. So he yeah. tries to take a swing, and it doesn't quite. But they're running from you, right. so like you're not yeah. having to worry about them coming back to attack you. Uh, the wolves, the wolves around you, um, King, have lost sight of you. Yeah. Um, in the darkness and they are you considered in like kind of stealth where they might try to perceive you or is it it's complete magical darkness right it's magical darkness so they can't see me but there is still like the, the rulings where they can attack just at disadvantage okay so we're gonna try that. See how they do. Whee! Thirteen. So that's a seven. Disadvantage. Yes. Yeah. They. You. You can sense them. Your character. Can you actually? Do you have any senses that you can see what's going on around you? Or I have blind you... sight for ten feet. Okay, your blind sight allows you. You just like they lunge and try to snap at you, and you just skitter around them as they try to attack you. Oh, that's that's an awesome ability with mm -hmm. the magical darkness. Mm hmm. So, all right, that brings us to your turn. All right, for starters, I am going to instantly hex the one that tried lunging at me okay so let me just read what that does so it doesn't um do a save or anything like that. okay 
Okay, yeah, it just says I place a curse on a character within range until the spell ends. Um, so yeah, it's just a curse. Um, I'm gonna give him disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Okay. Uh, sorry, on any dexterity checks. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. And then I'm going to make an attack with my halberd. Um against the one that's that's right by me. Okay. Yeet. What's your bonus? Uh nine. Holy crap. Okay. So that brings us to sixteen, you do hit. Okay, so that's a D ten plus six and a D six because they're hexed. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Warlocks, man. Warlocks. So, <laughs> D10? Right? D10 and a D6. Alright. So that's 8 damage. Do you get bonus damage? Additional um, damage to that? Yeah, plus 6. Holy crap. Uh, Warlocks, man. Warlocks. <laughs> so that's that's 8 plus that's 15. So that's nine slashing. Yeah, nine slashing, five necrotic. Holy crap. That's the end of my turn. How much damage did you do, Dizzy? Turn to do math with it. Uh, uh, 15. You both did? Okay. All right. So, so. I'm going to get it. Basically, essentially, it's a similar situation where um your your character the wolf lunges past you and does your hex have a component or does do you do anything when you curse them um for flavor essentially i have to use a Petrified Eye of Newt, which I have in my component pouch, mm -hmm. but essentially, I guess as he jumps past me and lunges, is it okay if I describe it? Yeah, please, go ahead. So you <laughs> okay. get to straight up kill two of them, and the other three um, are, are injured in this attack. Okay, so as the one jumps and kind of like lunges at me, mm -hmm. I kind of like sidestep and take yeah. my hand and like shove it up into its gut, and that's when I cast Hex onto it. I then take my glaive and kind of like stab it through its side as it's like up on my hand. Mm -hmm. I pull out my glaive, I spin around, and I hit the other one that's 10 feet away and kind of like just hit it across its like jaw nice. or something like that. And I guess that's how I, I, I take, <laughs> take out two of them. I don't know. Oh. Uh, as your, as your glaive I'm going to add this. As your glaive comes out and the wolf's blood splatters as you swing, it drips on the other two and hits them, and they take the necrotic damage, backing away. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> uh, and they they attempt to... They also attempt to flee from you. Um, on my do you turn have, or their turn? Um... They they are going to attempt to flee on their turn. Okay, okay. Then we'll wait for for their turn. Okay. So. I do have a ten foot reach. Right. For attacks. Okay. Dang. So, that brings us to, Dizzy's turn. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the wolves that I, the wolves that I can see have already fled. Yeah. They are fleeing you, so they're trying to leave this, like, 50-foot area of the okay. thing. So, they they were fleeing. You can either choose to pursue them. If you do, you will have to leave the protective bubble. Um, At the point in time that they're leaving the area as long as they're not like running towards the wizard or the captain no like it's I, they're trying to leave like get away from you yeah we're good so. to go at that point um he's gonna turn 
look around real quick. Okay, Dark Dome's still up. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it drops as soon as I cast Hex. Oh, concentration. So, so you see it drop, and you're, as you turn around, you see these other wolves cringing back from getting burned, and one of them has is dead on the ground, and the other one has lost its jaw and is, is dying. Roughly how far away are they? From you? You did a 20-foot jump away. Yeah. So, and I would say you were probably... How how close together? Like, this this all happened really quickly. The place got attacked by the by the kaiju wolf, and the protective dome went up. Um, yeah. Kind of all at the same time. Um, were you... How close together were you two, would you say? Uh, decently enough. Okay, I imagine so... we were, like, trying to figure out the trap and get things ready mm -hmm. when all the fire came up and so i'd say you like, guys were within 10 feet of each other yeah. um so so you're like 30 feet away right now okay so i can just do i'll just move 30 feet mm -hmm. and then just use my cables for two attacks again okay like as soon as i get into range okay Ooh, spicy. Uh, so that's a 25 and a 12. <laughs> and a 12? Dang, yeah. son! Okay, I'm just gonna it's pop loading. that out there. <laughs> so that's... That's 1 plus 4, you said? Yeah. Okay. And now... And... Yeet. So 5 and... So 10, is that another one? Yeah, 10 total. 10 total. Okay, so these wolves turn to flee from getting burned by the necrotic blood of their own follower or their own pack member. And you're, just tell me how you just destroy them. <laughs> so <laughs> as they're starting to back away, the second they turn around, they just see this this spearheaded looking cable flying at them clocks one of them in the face the other one reaches out grabs onto the other one reaches out grabs onto it and flings it into the third one just just this flat like almost like snake arms looking everything's just whipping around Hot and dangerous. <laughs> I am the danger. Oh. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, the shield breaks on the next attack from the kaiju. And. Oh. Um, you guys need to make deck saving throws. Heck. As fire pours down on the camp. It's breathing fire on us? The it's wolf been, is, yeah. It's been breathing fire. <laughs> it's been breathing fire on the the dome shield this entire time. <laughs> Big old kaiju wolf is one spicy boy. Ate <laughs> too much like ghost peppers. <laughs> I swear it wasn't me. <laughs> Unless um, did he raid my wagon? So the whole point we brought it was to, do, to feed do, him. Yeah, I know do, it is. Do you guys have any? Do you guys have anything like advantage on saving throws or anything for Dex? Uh, I have a plus one. Plus one. Okay. No, I uh. Although, hang on, let me check real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, no, I'm gonna. As as the attack comes, actually, no, I can't do that. Never mind. Go for it. Okay. I mean, you do have inspiration if you want to use it, Dizzy. You still have yours. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you how to play. Thank you for reminding me, though. I did forget. Okay, no, we're going to for it. We're oh, going to go for it. We're going, we're going to go for okay. it. <laughs> 16 and a 50. Well done, y'all. That's not so, bad. Um... 
Mine's 17, because plus one. Plus one. If yours is yeah. straight 15, right? Yep. Okay. So, um... I am not fast. As, as the fire as the fire pours down on you guys you you are able to to avoid the swamp as it comes through using your cables and you scuttling around quickly mm -hmm. you guys are able to to avoid getting uh, you actually take cover behind the nice metal uh covering of of Keisha's wagon as the fire rips past and and doesn't doesn't harm it so it's a nice cover <laughs> ah yes good old Alexandrian steel <laughs> well this uh, mantis mine is the same as i remember <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um the Kaiju's turn is over. What do you guys want to do? I'm gonna start rushing. Actually, no. For uh, step one, I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna reach over to Yay, and <laughs> yep. I'm gonna cast Long Strider. Okay. What does that do? So, <laughs> for the next hour, uh, your mo your movement speed increases by ten feet. Nice. Ooh, I now have Actually, a solid no, no, no. thirty-five. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, cast it at second level, targeting myself as well. Okay. Because uh, when I cast the spell <laughs> using a spell slot of second level or higher, you can target one additional creature for each spell slot above the first. Dang. Nice. Yeah. So we both have ten additional feet of movement. That. I like it. I like it a lot. I am a support so, tank. Let's go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go. Um, so are so you've just cast that. Are you performing any movement? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start moving towards the kaiju wolf. Ain't nothing to it. Just let's just go. Maximum distance. Yeah. So when I so forty feet, because my base movement is thirty, plus ten. And then I'll use my cables to like start latching onto the trees and boosting myself upwards towards where the kaiju is. So, so total of like sixty feet. So um, you reach over, you touch him, and the magic swirls between you both. You feel the boost, and using your cables, you grab the top of your wagon and just Spider-Man launch yourself up and catch the nearest tree and pull yourself just charging right at this thing as I am it's almost, yeah i'm full on spider-man swinging through these yeah. trees i i'm perfectly happy having you doing that i'm not gonna follow <laughs> the movement. i'm not following the movement rules because that's just way too cool <laughs> well i mean it it mechanically my cables also give me a climbing speed equal yeah. to my movements while I have them equipped, so it's not like breaking mechanics. If you were to use all of your speed, how? So you have what, 30 or 40 regular speed? 30, 30 base with long strike or 40. So you have 40 base right now. Yep. Then you have 30 climbing. And then you could bonus action 20. Yeah. Holy shit. I love it. I am so mobile. Good. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you basically, I mean, like, your next turn, barring movement from the kaiju, which could still happen, uh, you're there. <laughs> like... yep. That's the idea. <laughs> We're hunting kaiju. I need to be mobile. <laughs> I, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Oh. Uh, so. All right, and it's not concentration, so it's right. so dumb. All right, King, what do you want to do? Um, so with that, I will take 
the call to action to charge into battle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll run my 35 speed because I <laughs> with with the plus 10. <laughs> and I will use my race ability to cast jump once as an action. Nice. And I will jump I think it's 30 feet because we standardly get 10 I believe mm -hmm. so I'll jump 30 feet and getting closer I will take my hex from the wolves that died yes and I will pass it to um to the kaiju so the kaiju is now hexed and he has disadvantage on uh dexterity checks it's like hunter's mark but spookier yeah, and that's not even my Hexblade's curse. That's just the spell Hex. <laughs> yep. <laughs> as as you're, you know, charging, you know, he he launches up into the air and is zipping through the trees, and you charge and leap forward. Your hand reaches back and you pull forward, and energy zips from the collapsed bodies of the wolves, and wraps around the kaiju as it twists and tries to fight it. And... Um, let's see. What? I'm sorry, I'm giggling, because it just occurred to me, King is playing a jumping spider. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we're fine. We're fine here. So we really have the dynamic duo, Doc Ock and Spider Man. I basically. love it. Yes. All right. Oh. Did we lose track of who was going when? No, it was uh, King still going first. King still going first. Yeah, it was King, then me, and then the wolves were before King, so whatever we're doing with the kaiju. Let's, um... I think it didn't really matter with, like, our movement stuff, because we were both just getting closer. Yeah, you're Charge. both just getting closer. So we're back to yeah. the beginning, getting, getting of the turn with the kaiju. Yeah. Okay, so that was a 15. Um... What were your guys' ACs again? 17. 15. Okay. Um, so, it, it attempts to, as Dizzy jumps at it and comes towards him, it lashes out a paw and tries to take you down and misses and cleaves a tree in two. And attacking tries to bite at yay and also misses coming at yay you. <laughs> as it, it you know swipes at dizzy misses sees you charging at it at the ground and bites down at you and you're able to to scuttle out of the way. That's actually part of your jump. We'll say you <laughs> jumped. You jumped over it as it okay. at you. I like I there like incorporating go. that. Um, so cinematic. it is now, huh? Is we're cinematic in this. I try really hard to be because it's just boring when you just say this mm -hmm. kind of happens. Eh, you know, why not incorporate it, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I love it. Um, seeing you both charging at it and, and having tried to take bites at you, um, it, it backs up, it backs up about, I'd say it backs up about 10 feet. Um, 
So it doesn't leave either one of your guys' combat ranges. Um, but it does mm -hmm. kind of ready itself mm -hmm. to fight. And King's turn. Okay. Tell me what you want to do. So, at this point, when I get... I'm going to use my movement now to get, like, right up to it. Got it. And I am going to use my uh, class ability, Hexblade's Curse, on it. Nice. So now I get plus three bonus yes. to damage. And I crit on a 19 and 20. Holy crap. So. Warlocks, man. Warlocks. <laughs> Warlocks, man. <laughs> so now that being said... I'm going to um, use my action to make an attack against it. Okay. Um, am I flanking with Dizzy by chance? Yes. So would you like advantage? Yes, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> so that's a four. <laughs> and... Seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a 16 okay. total. 16. Oh. Helping. So, uh, because this thing is actually injured, uh, its AC huh? is actually lower than normal, so you do hit it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, can you give me a d10 and a d6? Because it is hexed as well. So wait, is that an additional D10 and D6 to your normal damage? No, 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 no. Oh, just, That's just, just my normal, okay. yeah. I was like, holy <laughs> freaking just, crap, man! Just, just keep stacking on the dice. Just, just, just have that entire squad ready to go. Just... <laughs> okay, so that's... So that's 11 base damage. Okay, so that's plus 12, because... Wait, no, sorry, I lied. Hold on. I looked at my hit dice. <laughs> sorry, that's plus nine. Okay. Um, So that's a 20, because I have six from my normal damage, then I get three from Hexblade's Curse. So that's a total of nine on top of the 11. So 20. So you, you are running at this thing, it bites down at you, you jump over its head, and it pulls back, it steps away from you, and as it steps back, you run forward, step between its legs, because this thing's 100 feet tall, and spin your hex blade and cut it right behind you, like right into the knee at its leg. Ouch. Yeah, oh, and that also does necrotic damage, right? As part yeah, of but the D6 attack. was necrotic. It was one, I think. Oh, wait, no. So, I, I'm, I only have half four. my screen. Oh, that was four. Four necrotic. Yeah. So your cut, like, the skin around the cut starts, like, decaying and dissolving from the cut. <laughs> and it, it roars at that and is not happy about, about this. Well, that was a good hit. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, so you only moved you only moved about ten feet. Um if you want to move or do anything. Nope, I'll just stay there to help um Dizzy or 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 Oh Keesh. I forgot the food. Keesh. <laughs> Keesh. <laughs> Help Keish with flanking. We still haven't introduced each ourselves to each other. No, but it's still good to reference the I mean, characters in yeah, in game. Yeah, yeah. I'm still laughing about it. <laughs> All right. So, um. So an important note for you guys: as we go forward with this fight. This creature is big enough that if you want to attempt to make climbing moves or something like that to give yourself advantage, you can. Oh, good. Like, not necessarily, like, actual advantage, but, like, 
if you specifically want to attack certain parts of its body by climbing on it, mm-hmm. you can. Um, it might try to shake you off, but you can do that. This thing is big enough to actually be considered landscape. So. Oh. Yeah, you said it's 100 have... feet tall, right? It's 100 feet tall, and he just cut its leg, so it's kind of, like, bent down and stuff like that. So. I just noticed I have dark vision for 180 feet. That's amazing. So you can see perfectly with all this fire going on in the middle of the night. <laughs> I kind of need the fire to help me see because I'm a dumb dragonborn. Your dragonborn, dragonborn doesn't beast. have dark vision? Dragonborn's one of the like three races in Dungeons and Dragons that doesn't get dark vision. I love that actually. The so. other being human and halfling. I mean, yep. you guys are like, that's another thing. Like, the light of the fire is literally your light source. It is like, you know, you're in the middle of the woods, in the middle of freaking nowhere. You mm-hmm. know, so it's, it is dark. <laughs> in the middle of the night. In the middle yep. of the night. Yes. <laughs> Look, we're we're still making it work, okay? We're we're making oh, yeah. this work. All right. So. so since you specified that we can uh my turn, right? Yep. Okay, since you specified we can climb this thing, mm-hmm. uh Keisha's gonna because I was charging towards it, I'm gonna get up to it, like on it. Mm-hmm. And I wanna like climb on it and aim for mm-hmm. Like aim to move towards the back of the head. Okay. Since that's all climbing and everything like that, you mm-hmm. you you're good. So. Okay. Um. So and you then... move about thirty feet up, right? Yep, yeah, uh, forty. Forty. You move forty feet up, and and then do you use your cables? Yeah, yeah. I have okay. a climbing speed of 40 feet right now cool and then and then i want to get up towards the back of the head and i just want to straight up use my breath weapon right at the back of its head (laughs) um it's going to need to make a dex saving throw oh shit equal equal to hold up let me do my math real quick. Eight plus four plus uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Let's make a DC fifteen. Um, and I'm it gonna... is a disadvantage. Yeah, exactly. It's a disadvantage. Oh. Did not mean to grab <laughs> all those dice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What did you say the AC was? Or the fifteen. C- 15? What what's the okay. negative? Like, does it dodge, or does it take damage at all from your it attack? It takes half or... damage. It half takes damage. half damage. So, so, in the amount of time that it takes to you to like bring your breath in, rather than getting like a straight shot at the back of its neck, it like grazes along the side of its yeah. of its head as it like jerks because it like hears you breathe and like and obviously mm-hmm. like. You're, you've been climbing it, so it's like twisting around and like, yep. you know, it's so aware of quite... you. And it like yeah, so it, jerks its head exactly... to the side and your breath weapon is lightning, right? Yeah, so he's he's not exactly get a stable footing, so by the time he gets his breath up, uh, uh, you see lightning start to cr- crackle up his spine, mm-hmm. full on Godzilla style. Yeah. And he takes the br- he takes the shot, but He's not stable, and the wolf jerks, so it just grazes on the side. Uh, I need two d10. Okay. Give it a second d10. Let's pin that down. down. Oh. Oh. What's your bonus right, to so, that? <laughs> uh, it there it doesn't get a bonus, unfortunately. Oh, okay. So it's straight 13 damage. Yeah, so half that. Half 13. So. Yeah, so either 7 or 6. Definitely yeah, 7. Under. I'm going with 7. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's fine. So. 7 lightning damage to the face. Just lightning, like, like the 
fur burns away from the side of its head as just this brilliant blue just like <laughs> rips out past it. Um, so that does bring it around to its turn, though. Mm. If we're going on that same rotation. Um, we cry. Huh? <laughs> we cry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, this would be a terrible time for a viewer to lose the kaiju. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Say less. <laughs> Change all of our magical damage to fire. Clearly, this thing's a fire breather. Wait. Uh, I didn't activate that one yet. Sorry, I haven't written it. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> all right. Check. Um, it tries to throw you off. Okay. Uh, and we're gonna use grapple rules, essentially, okay. because you're climbing. Uh, so it's gonna be a opposed strength. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am not so cocky anymore. <laughs> that's a that's a five. <laughs> Question. Uh, Normal D and D rules is that you do not actually crit fail. Like something like this would be considered a skills. Okay. You don't actually crit fail on them. Um. So, do you want to crit fail? <laughs> for the memes. Because like okay. I imagine it has, like, it's a post strength versus strength, right? Yeah. All right, so my roll in total would have been a five. Right. Mm -hmm. So I imagine the thing still wins. It, if I was going off of a specific, like, bonuses and stuff like that, I've been largely doing straight rolls for, mm -hmm. for injury's sake and everything like that. Do let's wanna... go with the crit fail. Let, let's find Let's go let's with the fine. crit fail. Do you want to draw a card? Yes, give me a card. Okay. Let's, <laughs> Let's draw a card and see see what you get. Let's find out. Right. What could go wrong? Don't answer that question. <laughs> All right. Uh, as as you get <laughs> The creature spins around and you kind of get thrown up in the air. Time slows. Mm -hmm. Which card do you want? Second from the left. This one? Yes. Second from left. Mm -hmm. Memory of the past. Mm -hmm. Beautiful memories, memory of the past, based on a crit fail for this drawing of the card. Six of Cups upright, feeling safe and protected. As you're as you're about to do this, what what memory? comes to mind a sensation of being thrown in the air that is like a happy memory that your the mind first, flashes back to the first time that i tested my cables the first time flying through the air as if i had wings mm -hmm. just that feeling of soaring through the air, not being restricted by the ground anymore. All just right. like seeing the ground well beneath me, but just that f liberating feeling for the first time. As that memory comes back to you, it's like you get this instinct and insight kicks in and without looking you snap out one of the cables and um to to shake you off and throw you he actually threw himself he actually threw himself against a tree and a piece of the tree went up in the air and you catch on that tree and use its momentum to going its momentum to pull you back down 
um, and safely catch against another tree that's upright in that moment. I pressed triangle at just the right time. You did. You did not stay on the wolf, but you also did not get injured uh, by getting that. by getting yeeted off. I'll take so. that. Oh, that was a really good memory. I actually got chills. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, was I a, that. that was a really good draw. That was, that was good. Green. <laughs> uh, in Discord. In Discord. Hmm? Oh, you closed the stream in Discord, and I was like, goodbye, stream. Oh, no, but... sorry. I was trying to bring the yeah. dice back on. Is it still rotating? Come on. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't like it when you change seeds. It, like, fights it. We got Dizzy back, though. Dizzy's on the screen again. <laughs> oh, hey. You get to see my crazy mug. <laughs> oh man. No, don't be difficult. Alright, let's give it a second. Um so Dizzy just did that. And that was on the kaiju's turn. So Yeah, the kaiju his, and that, through it. And that was his action. There we go. Okay. Hey. Or back up. There we go. And... The kaiju, uh, having shaken you loose, uh, and hobbling on three legs, uh, backs up again. And begins um, begins to kind of glow with a faint glow that starts moving towards its head, clearly building up to another fire attack. Uh -oh. uh, but that takes that takes a turn to build up. So King, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, so I just want to clarify, where did the lightning strike, the, the right lightning breath attack? I would say the right side of its head. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I will go and I will kind of like run up it mm -hmm. and kind of like do like little jumps to try and scale quickly and get as close to that section as possible. Okay. And I will take my glaive mm -hmm. and I will kind of like stab it down into like where the wound, where okay. the lightning strike hit. I'll yep. stab it down and then try to aim it more towards like the throat area where he's building up the flame. Mm hmm. And so I would like to make an attack. Nice. Would you like to do that standard with dice roll, or would you like to do anything, any of our special rules? Just giving you the option. It's up to you. Uh, I didn't know there were special options for attacking. Sorry. No, like, um, <laughs> it was in part of what I sent of the special rules in the Discord the other night. Um as far as drawing cards and kind of like I just did with Dizzy offering him to draw a card. Um, you can also choose to skip a turn oh. to boost your stuff as well as, yeah, so you can either tempt fate by drawing a card to do what I just did with Dizzy. Uh, you can choose to skip a turn to increase your success or your damage. Um, what was the other you know thing? I'm feeling pretty lucky this turn. Okay. Yeah, inspiration, Tempt Fate, and Twist Fate. You already used your inspiration, so... I already used my inspiration. Mm -hmm. So, I'm I'm feeling pretty lucky. Uh-huh. I'd like to run and just make a normal normal attack. Right. Through the wound down into its neck. Let's do it. Oh. So. You are also climbing on him. So... I'm gonna give you advantage. 
I feel like uh, physically climbing on the creature should give you advantage. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, because like, even if it tries to move... It's essentially like, like being grappled, in my opinion. Like, how are you going to miss, like, unless it does something, you know? Yeah, I was thinking technically a ranged attack on it. Hit me with a 19. That's an 18. Yo. I was one off from getting a crit. Dang. So close. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> That's okay. So yeah, I run up and I kind of like toss my glaive into the wound down into its throat. And... So wait, you I used, used it like a momentum. spear? Like you like... Kind it? of. Okay. Kind of. Like I, I jump and kind of like lunge it <laughs> i don't know why i'm doing the actions you can't see me lunge it down into his throat <laughs> mm -hmm. and using the momentum from like lunging it and jumping i'm gonna like propel myself in the air and kind of like kick it down closer into the throat using like the force of my legs and then use my like webbing because i'm a spider every time i, I like am climbing i grapple myself down mm -hmm. And use that to kind of like get me back onto his body safely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. And your damage is still is both the ten and the six, right? Yep, because he is still hexed until he dies or a minute passes, which is ten rounds. So he has clearly not done ten rounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine. Oh. Nice. So that's three necrotic, four regular. So seven plus nine is sixteen. Another sixteen damage into into him. Jeez. I like it. So the works perfectly. You do all of this damage and it's right at the throat and it starts to um burn away at his throat where the stab went in. Um, you did damage. And charging an ability, I would say, is a concentration. As you're webbing back down to yourself, a, the, the magic building for the spell actually dissipates. And, and nice a God. burst of of non harmful fire just like spreads out from the point where your glaive was, and breaks the spell that he was building for his attack. Sexy. I like it. When I land, my weapon materializes back in my hand, so it, like kind of like evaporates out of the the wound and then just materializes in my hand. Yes. Yes. Warlock. That's the end of my turn. Warlocks, man. <laughs> Warlocks. Warlocks. <laughs> Has it been long enough for your character to have healed? Ten minutes. Oh, okay. No, then it has been long enough. All right. So now it's dizzy. So you see this <laughs> go out and it, like, Twitching its neck as you see, uh, as you see Ye climbing around mm. its neck. Uh, so I landed on a tree, right? Yeah, like you got like you zipped and locked right. against the tree. Um, um, you're probably, I mean, you're probably 30 feet. Okay. In a straight uh, line. So at that point, it's only uh, no, those are all weapon attack spells. Uh. All 
I want to try to move towards it. I'm up 30 mm -hmm. feet away. My cables only reach 20, so I'd have to... Uh, that scene we did with the zipping with the wreckage mm -hmm. in the first episode, can we do that quick time sequence again? We could. You also have the option of doing a... I mean, literally doing a standing jump off the tree. Oh, yeah, I do have a... Yeah, no, my strength is... like good enough that i have a if decent... you're if you're because i said you're what 30 you know yeah yeah like a standing jump to yeet yeah, yourself if I did in that the air. And, yeah yeet myself and then cable on i could do that because if because he's considered land so yeah so i can like use one action to move as a jump oh that's true if you want to save actions um well actually it'll work because i I can still, um, if I use one movement, one action to move, use my cables as a bonus action, and then if I can latch on to him, mm -hmm. then I can still make two attacks. Cool. Because I have extra attack. It's dumb. Yeah, jumping's a part of movement. If you move first, you can jump for free. I always forget that. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Um, okay. So... So you kick off, but leave your cable attached. Spin around the tree, get enough momentum, and yeet yourself into the air right at him. And oh. just onto his side, latching yourself in place with the cables. Okay, that where, works. Where do you land? I imagine like right at the um like the the shoulder area of like the front uh... backing up you're in midair you get to start your attack midair what do you hit <laughs> do, can I with 20 foot attack range can I can I hit him in the the same area that Ye just hit him oh throat? heck yeah and if you want, you can. Dude, you can freaking. Uh... Yeah. Okay, let's do it. All right. Two attacks. All right, let's do it. Two attacks. I've got something in mind, but I want to see. I want to see how you roll. So... I've got something in mind too. It's like I want to save it for a little more towards the end, but I. Yee. Oh wow. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, we'll go with my with a, a modifier on my idea. <laughs> What's your bonuses again? <laughs> Plus seven. <laughs> you can tempt fate again with that net one. <laughs> I'm tempted to. Do, do you want to go with my idea? Uh, let's see what you got, because clearly, that's not going to work. Yeah, you spin around the tree, you launch yourself at him, you bring your cables forward, latch into his fur, and you you just go to, like, pull yourself forward feet first, just right at that wound. To, like, you're going right in, like, feet first, full momentum. And he turns and grabs your cables with his teeth. And just yeet into the air. You are now falling. Upwards. <laughs> I'm falling up. He throws you up. So you yep. will begin your turn falling. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> Here we go. That That's my turn. That's your turn. So, um, and, and you see this happen. Yay. Because you were right there during your attack. So he literally tried to follow up your attack by hitting the same spot. So. That makes it your turn. What do you want to do, King? Um. Okay, so. I'm just enjoying this visual of you going like straight up in the air just like 
well then. <laughs> it, it's 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 the uh, the goofy yo. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> and then like time slows down for half a second again. It's just it was at this moment that he knew. <laughs> Um, so Keish is flying Keish pastors. Is... Huh, what was that? He's kind of like flying past. Yeah. Oh no, no like, he, he, he got thrown upwards? Probably. Yep. Okay, let's do math. If the wolf is 100 feet tall, you were going for the neck. Uh... You're probably like hundred and hundred and five hundred and ten feet up in the air. <laughs> so he's like at about wolf's head. Or yeah. I I'm a hundred feet. Yeah, you're you're roughly around a hundred feet. He's probably ten feet up in the air. Uh distance from you, let's make it an easy like because you wouldn't have thrown him like straight up in the air, you know. It'd be like ah, fifteen. I know 20. what I'll do. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um. So I will use my ability as a jumping spider, mm -hmm. and I'll cable myself down to the back of the head of of the. Wolf. Okay. And I will use my second jump to go up and grab kind of like a uh, quiche. Okay. And I'll retract my cable to have us kind of slamming, or not slamming, but like send us straight down to the wolf's head. Nice. So, I don't know. Is there any rolls you want me to do to try and catch him or grab him or um, do anything like that? I imagine it needs to be kind of a, either, most likely, what, acrobatics or something like that? Yeah, or I could do athletics to jump at him mm -hmm. accurately. Okay. Because I have the power, it's just learning Accuracy. where to go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Hit me with uh athletics plus three. Alright. Hell yeah. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. You nice. jump right up there and catch him. And then we come flying back. And I don't know if I have anything else that I can do because jumping's an action, mm -hmm. the jump spell. So I have a bonus action. Because you wouldn't have used your movement. Because you used the movement to get back, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I am all Gucci. That is the end of my turn. Sweet. Um, so, Dizzy, rather than starting your turn falling, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, are currently, for fun action-y senses, are being pulled back onto the wolf's head. <laughs> As time stops and he realizes that he fucked up, <laughs> just then, here comes this drider to grabs onto him. <laughs> As they're heading back, he goes, Oh, this turned out better than expected. Thank you very much. <laughs> I reply, you're very welcome. Now let's kill this. Um, I don't <laughs> kill this thing. You, um, do you have an aversion to static? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Good. But like, as we're heading back down, he's charging up his breath weapon again. Oh, yes. And uh... for, for cinematic sake, as soon as we hit the head, I want to try to aim at the back of the head again. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Last time. Except this time, I'm straight down. 
can can I help with this and like maybe toss my spear to give him like a lightning rod to to shoot at so it like oh. penetrates in the skull? Oh. I, I, will, I will use my inspiration if it means that we can make this happen cinematically. Oh. Yeah, okay. So, because your lightning breath is a dodge attack on the wolf's sake, yeah, right? It's dex, yeah, it's a dex saving throw. Dex saving throw. Doesn't normally work this way. I'm going to give it an additional disadvantage <laughs> on this attack. <laughs> I'll, if if you want me to spend my inspiration to make this happen, I'll do it. No, it's too cool. I'm not even gonna fucking roll it. Yeah. I'm not even gonna fucking roll it. Oh. As you catch him over the air, and he asks, "Do you have an aversion to static?" You go, "Nope." Your glaive appears. You fruit it down. It stabs into the back of the wolf's necks. And even before you land, Dizzy, he's just like, <sighs> still in midair, full throat, right into the back of its head, lights up the sky with this massive, this is probably the, like, this is a bigger bolt than you used against the crocodile kaiju. Yup. And just this bolt of lightning hits the creature's neck. You guys land. Ye grabs the glaive and connects a thread and takes the glaive and literally just drags it around the wolf's neck. You guys using cables and his web to sever the wolf's head. And just, like, you guys spin around it and, like, go in opposite directions, sticking to trees as the wolf's body and head fall separated. That's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Hmm. Does anybody have any any problem with giving uh, King MVP for that fucking suggestion? <laughs> MVP, MVP, MV, MVP, MVP. <laughs> you the king. You you the king here. Okay. We're, we're, mm. Oh, I supported man. the support, <laughs> dude. Oh, that was so good. I love it. I'll just heal myself back to full because we killed it thanks to Hexblade Curse. Yeah. Oh, oh, jeez. I look up at 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 um. You guys are like character. looking across each other, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think uh, we got some time for the steak now? <laughs> He looks down at the, the severed head, looks at the, yes. the slumping body of the wolf and goes, We can make a full-blown porterhouse out of this bitch. <laughs> Wonderful. Keep in mind, the, the, the aura of my character, like, you know, how it was, like, originally withdrawn, anxious, and all that, has completely switched the moment battle started. Yeah. Oh, man. That was amazing. I really There's like still this. electric particles in the air. Just, just... Oh yeah, like like lightning is like like the trees have like the body of the wolf has these sparkles of electricity running through it. Like the wizard is like pulling himself out of the rubble of like <laughs> the campsite. <laughs> He's like, well, I think we earned that. Um, that was hot. Yeah. Alexander comes, like, pulling himself out from under the carriage. Like. 
Oh my goodness. That was terrifying. <laughs> Keith just kind of looks over at the campsite. Looks back at the wolf. Back at the campsite. <laughs> back at Yay. We're taking all the credit for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I I would hope so. Good. Just so we're on the same page, just to make sure they don't... Well, okay, maybe the wizard gets a share. He did help <laughs> during the beginning of the fight. That that dome that dome was nice. Very it kept us from getting cooked. <laughs> Alexander's standing there like, are you you guys aren't really within hearing range, but like he won't have to worry about that if he knows his ass got saved. <laughs> 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 oh man. Um so uh Dizzy what what materials from from the wolf would you like to take for i want to i want to try to find first i want to take like the uh like the sh the flank mm -hmm. like flank stakes but i also want to try to find that like what was allowing the wolf to generate fire so like, mm. there was like a, okay. a, a, a chemical sack or anything like that okay i would i would also like to look to like maybe grab some like claw fragments, some teeth fragments, and maybe some coating of the throat to see what would like help protect it to maybe okay. help figure out what was causing it too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you like to do nature or investigation for your checks? I'll take yes. one. For I'll me. take investigation. Okay. For me, they're. They're the same. They're the same. Okay. Those those are the those are two of my um, uh, class skills. All right. Is that a nine or a six? It's a nine. It's a, a nine. nine. Okay. So. Sixteen. You got a sixteen. Yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen. So you get a plus one. So get yeah, it's either plus one or minus two. <laughs> We'll go with the plus one. Which one was that? <laughs> that was investigation. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, yeah. So, so you guys, you guys work together. You're, you're looking in the same like kind of areas, looking for like what caused it and everything like that. Um, you don't really good. You don't get really really good stakes out of like where you're cutting it because. Like I said before, the the wolf was already injured from something yeah. before, um, and you you actually find while you're going in like lodged in its ribs a a tooth from a different monster, um, and but you you you're uh, king, you are able to extract, um. tissue from the throat that if you would like to um, off stream we will put together for each, for some defensive armor or something like that if you would like to yeah we can definitely talk about something uh, so and I can come up with some fun stuff for that uh, as far as what was allowing the wolf to breathe fire um, you don't find a specific organ. Um, the ability appears to have been very magical and part of the creature's nature. Mm. Um, Dizzy, this is important for your character. Uh, during your investigation, this is a normal kaiju. Mm. As you're investigating around, everything is normal. It has the various hearts throughout its body that allowed it to be such a large creature to be fully sized. Um, yep. Okay, good, good. Is this... King, is this your character's first kaiju hunt? Or have you hunted them before? Um, My character has definitely hunted kaijus before. Okay. 
growing up in kind of like the village but it was more of like a, a, a village hut hunt mm -hmm. as opposed to like tracking them down gotcha that's why a lot of the a little insight a lot of the play was like very reactive as opposed to mm -hmm. offensive gotcha so um so you don't really you don't really learn anything new from this taking it apart everything about it is pretty consistent with what you've seen from kaiju in the past okay so. all right um, so creature of this size seven foot head is massive <laughs> Um, so, but you do have, uh, your wagon was uninjured. Um, King, your horses are fine. They better be. They are. <laughs> Make sure of that. Um, so. Oh, the, the wizard walks up to the wolf's head that is now separate and says this should make it easier and taps it and it shrinks not mm -hmm. not significantly but it does it does shrink to where it can be uh more easily either dragged or or put it to a wagon so Cast reduce. Exactly. <laughs> nice. So that when we get back to the village, mm -hmm. as we get it situated in the proper spot, let the spell go. Oh. Yep, you guys can take it back to the mansion because that's how you get your reward. Um, so. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so we'll kind of quick travel back to the mansion. Nothing mm -hmm. significant happens. The only thing that you all notice is that, like, as you're leaving the area, you see wolves gather behind you around the body of the fallen wolf. And you are shadowed all the way to taking the head back to the mansion. Got any of that skunk extract? Yeah, I have it right here. And you notice an immediate switch back to like the, <laughs> the closed, kind of withdrawn personality. And I take out a little bit and I kind of like rub it on the um back of our wagons like just a couple drops on the back but only sorry only the back of your wagon <laughs> i don't want you to like <laughs> the tail wagon and a little bit on the kind of like fur mm -hmm. you guys and... are you guys show up back at the mansion uh nothing you don't get bothered by anything really taking it back and you are once again greeted by Argus and he is shaking in the you know like did you kill it? Is it dead? And you the wizard brings it back up to full size which takes up you know most of the courtyard in front of the house mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we can't drag that thing through that little five foot door. No. Well no no, you're at the mansion. You're yeah. not back at the tavern. Because well, he yeah. said he said for you to bring it to his mansion. That's right, yeah. Um and Argus draws his pistol. Aha! Pow 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 and just unloads into the head. He is still cursed. He still looks looks Lupine, but doesn't seem to care. Like, that has gone past. Um, he... 
um, says that you know this is excellent. You've killed it, and he gives you both um, three hundred in gold each. Because it's feeling generous. Um, <laughs> and he also says, you know, not knowing that you guys have already taken stuff, offers, like, if you want to take, do you want to take a tooth? A tooth would be a great reward. And, um, he has... He's just kind of absentmindedly aims one of his cables, like catches one of the teeth and just tries to yank it out. <laughs> um, Argus's people come out with like hammers and mallets and hacksaws and stuff like that, and uh, and assist you in extracting a tooth. Um, so that is also part of your reward. Uh, he looks at. He looks at Gay and is like, "What about you? Would you like a tooth?" I I, I pat a little like cloth behind me. <laughs> ah, see, you've already taken your reward. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so he says, "Well, I appreciate uh, you all." And uh, yes. Real quick, you mentioned that uh, there was another tooth embedded in it from where, one of the wounds. Mm -hmm. Can I have retroactively taken that? Like, tried yes. to extract that tooth? Okay, cool. Yes. Cool, cool. I'm gonna study that. Study that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright. Um, I would ask, mm -hmm. like, as, as you take the, the tooth, if you could pass on any information you learn about it, if that is okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Something clicks in his head. I don't know how to look for you. I never oh. properly introduced myself. And he just kind of, Pat, just don't, don't tell my mother. <laughs> he pulls out a, uh, a clawed hand. It's just Akishus Domratek. Call me Kish. Nice to meet you, Kish. I'm Yay or God. And I kind of like nod a couple times and I search out by hand and you can kind of see like little claws on it too. And a bit of like that, the fur coming up it and the green patterns kind of like on the end of it too. And I shake your hand. Very firm, possibly a little too firm of a grip. <laughs> I'm, I'm small beam. It was very good hunting with you. It was a pleasure. You you did really good, uh, amazing. Uh, in fact, uh, you're the you're the one with the magnificent glaive, and well, to be quite frank, you put my cable skills to shame. Uh, the, natural born, I guess. <laughs> uh, natural born versus mechanical adaptations. Ah, oh, but it was a lovely hunt, nonetheless. So any information I discover on this other tooth, I will pass on to you. M much appreciated, and I shall share any knowledge I might come across, too. Yes, the sharing of knowledge. Very good. Excellent. And he just absentmindedly kind of wanders off watching them tear down this kaiju. Guys. Yeah, I go, I go prepare my carriage. As you guys go your separate ways, as you know, we have this scene of Kish observing them and, and giving instructions to someone who's improperly trying to to remove a section of skin from the skull and stuff like no. that. No, no, you need to go with the grain of the muscles, otherwise you're gonna rip the meat. It's not gonna be good. You're not going to get the right cut. And... Go, go, gotta go with this angle here. This angle. Uh, which which of your horses was the the white one? 
That's Azeroth the Destroyer. Azeroth the Destroyer. <laughs> and then the black white. It's bubblegum. Oh, it's bubblegum. <laughs> As you're walking back to the wagon, both of them like look at you. And for a moment, King, you get this like strange feeling. Like there's almost there's almost more to them than just animals. And then that fades and goes away. I give them a little pat on 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 each of their necks and like give them a little scratch and stuff and, and go find carrots to feed them. They seem very happy with their carrots. And then we fade to black as you go to find them carrots. And that's today's carrots game. Carrots in my wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's today's game. That was cinematic. That was glorious. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I hope I wasn't like too much. No, I you, guess you did excellently. So no problem with it. <gasps> and if and and going forward with other games, we'll we'll get a good a vibe back and forth as we do things. Because, um, mm -hmm. like, King, this is your first time playing with me as a DM. And I had to... Uh, Dizzy and I had a long conversation after our last game about more of the direction that I want to go with doing things like that. And it is these more cinematic mm -hmm. scenes. I really enjoyed your guys' roleplay and everything. Um, that made it a lot of fun. I really appreciated how you guys played off each other. In fact, I'm going to give you both We'll play stars. <laughs> Next, yes. Um, so no, I, I love, I love your character, King. Like the, the different personalities, uh, like the different uh, mannerisms, depending on in or out of combat. Oh, yeah, I love definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I thought it would be like a cool idea to kind of like play on it on like this really shut-in kind of character that holds themselves like personal mm -hmm. and then like in combat that's where they get like their confidence and their like motives and their drives and stuff mm -hmm. so i thought that'd just be really cool to to play out i loved your coloring choices like explaining the different colors along was it along your mm -hmm. fur and stuff mm -hmm. i really liked that that was very cool so. yeah yeah and uh, I really liked your character too, uh, Dizzy. Like, mm -hmm. the whole, like, I got a sense of, like, etiquette. Like, definitely, like, a high et etiquette kind of thing where you hold yourself to a standard, mm -hmm. but not, like, a stuck up standard, more like a roll with the punches kind of standard. And you always turned it into, like, your way, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> He's a master chef, but he's not freaking. It's just because he's he's at the point where he wants to just travel and find new things to new recipes to try, new flavors to profile, new and and hunting kaiju is just the greatest thing he can do right now. As far as like finding new recipes, finding new experiences. Um but he just, he loves the hunt, and he loves to support and do things with others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I'm having fun with this character. 
character. Plus, I don't usually play high intelligence. So... I don't know how to play a snooty, smarty... <laughs> like, I, I just don't. Yeah. I also don't usually play high charisma. And my character's got a, a 16 charisma, so I'm mm -hmm. like... Well, I don't. This is keeping this is, keeping that in mind going forward. I might give you some more opportunities to use that. You know, it's like I kind of sped through the character interactions in this one because I started realizing how much time had passed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which was so much fun because I have no problem with role play and talking. It's it was so much fun. Oh, um, yeah. So. But... The first hour, we were just having breakfast. <laughs> I know, I loved it. I loved it. It was so good. It makes me want to. It makes me want to schedule to have more time, but I know that's hard for everybody. Um, sometimes. So yeah, even like even like scheduling downtime interaction recordings. That's that is something that I want to do. That's one of the reasons that I added the note that like some schedules will be. Like, hey, we're just recording, and like that might mm -hmm. be something where we're doing it, like, you know, like starting at like six o'clock my time or something like that at night, not live mm -hmm. stream, you know, just, just recording us talking. And yeah, so... getting more like role play character interaction fleshed out, because mm -hmm. then the mainstream, you know, focus on the the kaiju hunting, the fighting. Yeah. Because I do want to, I do want to do some fun like things that don't follow like the main story necessarily of the characters that are like fun little like here's this video for the Patreon viewers and stuff like that. Yeah, that would be fun. So. I, I think that would be a good idea, just because like for the streams, if you're wanting them like small and and quick, like three four hours and stuff, it's good for like the kaiju hunting. But if you really want to flesh out the characters and get those really like nice dramatic scenes then you will need like some extra time too yeah. mm -hmm. but, but thank you guys so much and this was awesome mm -hmm. this was uh, a lot of fun thank you all <laughs>